two, one. A lullaby? I don't like this. Charles, what's on the other side of the door? Hello and welcome to Core. This is Core. We talk about video games, the big and the small, the industry stuff, and all the way down to the dumb thing we played this week. My name is Scott Johnson with Bo Schwartz and John Jagger. Before we get cranking too far, I finally took the time it takes to get my Steam Deck to play uh, Game Pass X Cloud on it. And I am here to tell you, if you own a Steam Deck and I you do. ping me, you ping me on Discord, I will give you these very simple to follow instructions. And once you do, you will wonder why you didn't do it on day one. It is so great. It's the perfect xCloud streaming device, uh, it turns out. And I played a whole bunch of things on Game Pass without any perceivable input lag. And I'm running on just like crap Wi-Fi in the house. And it blew my freaking mind. And it took me maybe five, less than five minutes. Maybe it took me three, four minutes to do the whole thing. So it'd be nice if Microsoft said, hey, here's a little app that just runs natively in Steam. Uh, there you go. That'd be nice. But right now they don't, so you have to do a little tweaky. But once you've done the tweaky, it's one of the coolest things I've done on that thing. So if you're paying for Game Pass and you have a, a Steam Deck, uh, run, don't walk. All right? <laughs> There's your advice for the day, everybody. It's time to jump into our big, hot stuff. Oh, look, you guys. Uh, Microsoft and Sony in the news. We'll talk about their big stink here in a minute, but I think more importantly, outside of the European Trade Commission stuff and them trying to figure out how they're going to get uh, this acquisition of uh, Act Activision Blizzard King through and done, uh, that's all a whole separate conversation, and we can have some of that, but I feel like Microsoft is making little deals to try to sweeten the pot for those who may be uh, regulating this plan. And uh, they did so with a couple of things. We knew about the Nintendo thing. They basically said, look, we're going to bring Call of Duty, uh, and that may mean other games, but Call of Duty in particular will be coming to Nintendo platforms for the next 10 years. That is now a contractually obligated thing Microsoft has signed, and Nintendo happily uh, co-signed. So yeah. they, they did that uh, as a way of almost showing, saying to Sony, hey, look what we do with Nintendo. You could do that. And Sony still... <laughs> this could be you, but you're playing. Yeah, but you're playing a game, and I guess we are too, but we kind of have a weird upper hand right now because we're going to do all this. So they did that with Nintendo. Sony didn't budge. And then this last week, they made a deal with NVIDIA where uh, their version of Phil, they have a Phil, the, their CEO of software services, his name is Phil as well. <laughs> Everybody's got a Phil these days. Everybody needs a Phil. Um, somebody feed Phil. Anyway, they signed a deal with Microsoft for another, for a full decade of Microsoft's products and where possible third parties were allowed. Um, but all their games uh, will be available via GeForce Now. Now, it's a little weird because the, the way GeForce Now works is if you've got a game you bought on Steam and it's supported, you can play it through GeForce Now, their streaming service, because you own it on the platform. That's just a virtual PC out there playing the game for you that you're connected to and that you're streaming. Um, and it works quite well. But it isn't a service that you that you buy games through. And so this will still be people, this will still be Microsoft saying, you know, you'll own the game somewhere, uh, but then where wherever you do, you'll also be able to stream it through GeForce Now. And a lot of people say, well, doesn't this compete directly with xCloud? And my answer is no. Um, I guess you could say if their entire business was revolving around, well, who's going to dominate the streaming games business, then maybe that would be seen as competition. But Microsoft's plans seem to be like they have been for a while now, play our games wherever you want to. We don't care where, just as long as you're buying them, paying for them, and then you can play them wherever you want. And if Sony would let us, we'd have Game Pass on PlayStation. And if Nintendo would let us, we'd have it on there. Um, but also la uh, lends credence when you're trying to tell people like, look, we're... We're not in it for a monopoly. We're in it for, you know, play where you want to play. Mm -hmm. Look, we're, we're look at us supporting our direct competitors in a certain space. Aren't we great? Yep. Yeah. You know, it's definitely they are definitely peacocking a little bit. <laughs> they're they're walking around 
acting like they're just the best, where they're everybody's friend, and just mean old Sony mm-hmm. is like ruining the fun that everybody else is having. That's mm-hmm. that's the atmosphere they want to convince everybody. Of. You're absolutely right, but they are they are genuine initiatives in that they're making these actual agreements and they are they are actually going to happen. And in Nvidia's case, they they lose nothing. Like, in fact, they'll gain back some stuff that was pulled from them. It used to be you could play WoW, you could play Overwatch, you could play other Blizzard games, uh, and Call of Duty, for that matter. You could play those games via uh, GeForce Now. And then Activision Blizzard pulled that and said, don't do that. We don't want you to do that. And everybody kind of, at the time, I did anyway, I theorized that maybe Blizzard had their own white label Stadia or something coming out that was going to compete, but that never happened. Um this would bring that all back into the fold. It would bring, you know, Halo and everything else into the fold. So you would end up with a huge library of content that if you own it somewhere, somehow, even if it's via Game Pass, if you go use it through GeForce Now, you can get that stuff. And in NVIDIA's case, that's what they, they literally want that. They just want <clears throat> more libraries, more games, and more services available for them to stream through GeForce Now. Because again, they don't have a store. They don't sell you video games on GeForce Now. They just stream them. And so so that part of this is a total no-brainer. Like for, for I, I, NVIDIA, I should say. They don't have to sacrifice anything. They gain from this. I do have one question, yeah. though. This may be a dumb question. I just I genuinely don't know, and I only just thought about this. So Microsoft is saying to Nintendo, let's just use Nintendo because I feel like it's a cleaner example. Microsoft is saying to Nintendo, for the next 10 years, we are going to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo platforms. So for right now, at least, that means the Switch. Right. What if this deal doesn't go through? Are they still going to find a way to... uh, Microsoft's going to foot the bill to put it on there? Or is this only if the deal goes through, are they going to be doing this? That's my understanding. The deal, it is contingent on the deal going through. Okay. And Nintendo has has agreed to this based on that going through. If it doesn't go through, nobody's on the hook for anything. So okay, Microsoft's not going to be like, "Oh shucks, deal didn't go through." Well, here's your ten years of Call of Duty, Nintendo. We're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you and what you said earlier is not wrong. They're definitely making moves that better that improve their image in this acquisition to regulators. But it also is, they are actually good moves in general, like from a business standpoint. I mean, whether you're, if you're not a Microsoft or an Xbox fan, fine, whatever. Nothing we say today will sound good to you. But, but um, from a, from a business standpoint, if they want this deal to go through, even if there wasn't opposition in the European Union or other places in regulation, they would probably still aim for these things. Because again, the goal is how do we get our services and our cloud infrastructure everywhere possible and this is one way they do that see the one thing they didn't say is they say yeah 10 years on nintendo platforms well that means the switch that's either a really dumbed down dumbed down version of call of duty and by dumb i don't mean stupid i mean like you know visually well, it's like, gonna take it's a hit not everybody knows switch cannot hold up to modern consoles no it can't do it wise. it can't do it it's not made for that and so what i think this could mean is how they did it with a few other games, which is these are stream games. And with that infrastructure, yeah. that means, uh, you know, potentially a better experience. Uh, what was the game that did that? Oh, Control did that. Control is 100. You can buy Control on on, an, on a Nintendo platform or on Switch, but you play it streamed. There yeah. is no native installed on the, on the SD card version of Control on that device. And it plays really well. It plays quite well, in fact. But, you know, some people may not know that. They'll go spend 59 bucks and go, where the hell's the game? It's in the cloud. <laughs> what is this? Anyway, Bo, any thoughts, feelings? Do you think uh, do you think these are empty gestures or is this meaningful for Microsoft to say, you know, we're going to do this stuff and lock stuff in and, hey, maybe this will make Sony budge, but more importantly, make the EU go, oh, okay, fine, you guys can buy them. Yeah, I don't know what else. It seems maybe it'll work. I don't know. <laughs> That's, I, I don't know if they know. I just I don't know what else they would do to convince people they're not. Like, I guess monetarily, if you're just, like, an overwhelming behemoth, like, isn't that just where you land? Like, mm. I don't know how antitrust works and all that, right? So I don't... Like, the I don't idea know. is, that are they are they materially... Sony would argue, yes. Are they materially standing in the way of Sony competing by owning Activision Blizzard? 
And is it fair? Yeah, I guess so. Like, isn't it also just like a consolidation of revenue? Like, if you are just making so much money that you choke out any glimmer of hope for anyone to compete, like it may not matter that they're like, yeah, we're partnering with Nintendo, but like, if their revenue street, if if just the revenue from that merger is just so overwhelming that that you know, doesn't all those gestures just don't matter because they stand to make a ton of money. Like it seems right. like the only thing that gets asked is like you gotta divest some stuff if you want that. Right. So I don't I don't know. They've even suggested <laughs> that. They suggested that they don't include Blizzard with the acquisition, that that's a separate yeah. thing and it runs on its own. Which to be well, honest, Call I Call of wouldn't... Duty as well. They also oh, suggested yeah. Call of Duty be completely yeah. relegated to its own like, thing. I, I don't know what the law the world of law around this antitrust is right like there there is an answer it's probably very easy to the people in the know mm -hmm. and i mean i don't know without getting too deep into it you could circumvent regulation there, you know there there are reasons and examples why you might make exceptions so maybe i don't I, like, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors with that deal i mean you know i don't think microsoft isn't like we need the business like it's kind of just like why not let's buy like I don't I don't understand what ABK has that Microsoft really needs like they don't need it per se but they do right. they do it does vastly improve their portfolio very quickly in the same way Bethesda's sure. acquisition did and all of that but the way the way I think that that this I just want to keep winning the way they would argue this though is that Activision Blizzard already exists and they already make these games and these things already end up on these platforms. And so Microsoft's saying, well, we'll continue to honor that and make sure they end up on these platforms. We're even willing to sign these deals, which Activision's, Activision's deal to publish on PlayStation actually ends next year. Now, one would assume without all this story of acquisition, they would just in perpetuity renew that, that deal. But think of it as Madden or whatever. You know, Madden signs a deal with the NFL. It lasts for a certain amount of time. They renegotiate and they re-up the deal. It's a little bit like that already with consoles. And in this case, Microsoft's saying, yeah, we'll... We'll keep doing it. In fact, we'll sign one for 10 years right now, and we just skip over next year's cancellation. You're just We just keep going. And Sony's I mean, not budging. So if it, whether Microsoft owned all that or it continued to be its own thing with Activision, it's the same for Sony or Nintendo. In fact, it's better for Nintendo because they weren't getting anything from Call of Duty. And in Sony's case, they don't. nothing changes for them. They just keep publishing it. I, I guess, I guess like as the weeks have gone on, because we haven't talked about it, in any meaningful depth in a little while this news of the acquisition happened at a low point for abk yeah but i find myself asking i'm like you know what do i care if microsoft owns it like the timing was that like ug kotick ug abk leadership even as early, as recent as this week with the bears slamming <laughs> slamming meeting that i heard all about on twitter mm -hmm. um uh, but I'm still like, well, there's this perception that Microsoft is like, will do well by it. But I, like the ultimate version of Halo was a real punt. Like it was, you know, like I, <laughs> I, I'm not like, oh yeah, Microsoft will save anything. Like I, it may make better, a better workplace for the people working there, but uh, you know, that's good. But mm -hmm. they can also quit and go work for Microsoft. <laughs> the company sucks too. Like we don't have to do a transaction of IP necessarily, and yeah. there are lots of new IPs around the corner. So I, it's not that I don't want it to happen. I just feel like I'm not that invested either way. Like I don't know that this. I don't know to what degree this solves things. You know, it's like out of the frying pan into the fire kind of perspective on it. So, you know, I, I'm I like my uh, just from my perspective, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a, a great outcome. Maybe it should be shut down. I, I don't know why. I think it's just Blizzard fans really want to see the leadership fixed. We want Activision gone. <laughs> like, like, honestly, like, yeah. like, I think a lot of the, you know, there were some bad apples. It, it, the, they had to come to that moment to clean house, but what I hear subsequently and just all, all the different release and drafts of emails is they're in a different world and they don't uphold Blizzard values. And the only outcome that's a good one is what they should do is let just, they should just let go of Blizzard. We'll sell you uh, Activision and King and Blizzard, you know, just in my dream of dreams, just you, you guys just take your company. Like just, just take your company and buzz off. Here's it's possible. It, Mike, Mike Morheim, buy it from me for a dollar. <laughs>
Well, you know they're what not going like, to do that. Like but that I, would I be the point. ideal outcome. And then Microsoft gets to merge, and then Blizzard just gets to you know try and pivot away from the darkness that it encountered. Yeah. And and be... don't give it to Morheim though. He, I'm not. I'm not yeah, saying well, he perpetuated it, but that dude. That dude. Give it to the the one who wants it the least is the one most um, uh, worthy of leadership. It should be Chris. <laughs> give it to Metzen. <laughs> All right, let's do it. You know, let's get uh, I mean, he, like, <laughs> not that Bo's picking favorites. He's got Chris Metzen literally sitting right next to his forehead. On the yeah, right yeah. Not that he's Look, playing favorites, but just give it to Chris. Yeah. Look, if there's anyone I have a, a very strong feeling about uh, in a good way, it's that man uh, with Blizzard. I mean, there's other nice people I met from the company too, but just Metzen you're right about him never Blizzard. wanting that though. You're right about yeah, that. Yeah, but it's, it's like every hero, and he's like big into hero movies. It's like. It writes itself, Chris. I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> you, yeah. you know, and that's in the scenario where they sell it to you for a dollar, right? Which mm. is not going to happen, but you know. We can He's drink. the Jesus in this scenario. You come in here and you save everybody. You yeah. make the ultimate sacrifice and save the company. But maybe Bobby's listening. He's like, you know, I don't even like Blizzard that much. Yeah, I'll sell it for a dollar and then I'll make all this money selling the rest and the governments will be okay with it. Kodak, yeah. Maybe I'll- yeah. Yeah. I, I think this is. I think I just solved the transaction. Oh wow! Kind of boys all right. After all this rough <laughs> done. stuff, Pick it, it up. Okay. Why didn't they bring Bo in? He could have made Vampire Survivors in a week, and he could have solved this in 15 minutes. <laughs> I just solved it in 15. You watched me solve it. <laughs> we saw it in real time, man. That was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's uh, all the talk right now uh, because they're they're in the middle of having to convince the EU that they're going to make good on whatever they're going to make good on, and um, it will determine a lot. So uh, we'll keep our eye on it. We'll talk about it more on the show as things come up. And I uh, would love to hear your feedback as well. Oh, look, what just arrived. A question from a patron. It's time for our Patreon message of the week. This came from Tez, who asks us this following question. How do you personally determine what a game is worth uh, at the cost of purchase? If the game, Sorry, if the game is worth the cost of purchase, do you look at the length of time it will take to complete and compare to the dollar spent? Or do you buy things on impulse and not really do a fun per dollars comparison, says Tez. Well, I think it's a great question. Yeah, um, I very rarely consider fun per dollars as no. a like as a thought. I I really don't. I never check how long the game is. I never check. You know, I I've gotten I've been around games for a very long time, and while I'm not infallible, you know, I, I always point to the re not re release, but the the. 2016 is it doom i don't remember what 2016 it for out. the first one yeah it's supposed to remember numbers and it never happened <laughs> uh that doom game i remember constantly saying like nobody's reviewing it nobody's mm-hmm. talking about it the gameplay looked like all you do is run and shoot things uh i don't know if there's any depth to this thing i think this game is gonna be a flop it's gonna suck and then it ended up being one of if not my favorite thing that came out that year so I am not always right about these things, but I do have a good enough nose and sense about things that I can usually look at a game, usually look at a review or two, and get enough of an idea to at least be in the ballpark of what I'm expecting versus what I'm getting. And if I'm unsure, that's what I do. Some games I buy sight unseen. You know, we live in a world where returns are possible. And, uh, you know, I, I just... To me, I, I think cost is always a, a tricky thing because for some people, you know, it's like, oh, video games cost $70, so $70 for a video game is no big deal. But for some people, $70 is like, why are games so expensive? Yeah. Um, yeah what is going on? Uh, so it's a hard thing to quantify. Uh, it really varies from game to game. I mean, right now we live in a an interesting time where now it feels like more often than not the question is, am I going to have to pay for this game? Yeah. Because so often it's like, well, there it is on Game Pass, there it is on this, oh, it's a free-to-play game. You know, uh, it, it feels like more and more, whenever I have to purchase a game, I'm just sitting there going like, do I really have to buy this? And I'm like Googling this, and do I have to pay for Elden Ring? Mm. I, I guess I have to buy yep. Elden Ring, I didn't know. And then you <laughs> go and you purchase it. Like, it's it's kind of a weird time for video games in that regard, but... um That doesn't answer your question. I don't think about it very much. No, I think that actually kind of helps because that's that's kind of me too. It's a lot of it's a lot of intuition. It's a lot of uh, oh, I like what these developers have done three games in a row. Uh, How's the fourth one going to be bad? Like like it's generalizations, but are based on experience. 
I like to see aggregate reviews on Steam in particular, because even though Steam can be a bit of a shit show when it comes to reviews and bombing and all that, most of the time you can look at it and get a pretty good idea of 10,000 people have put it in overwhelmingly positive territory. You're, and it's a genre you like, you're in pretty good hands, usually. Um, that's one factor, but it's not the only factor. Um, so I, I take a bunch of that into, into account. I feel like of all of us, though, Bose may be the most intuitive because you know what you like and you know it and you see it sort of stuff. I don't know. I don't want to speak for you. So, but what do you, how do you do it? How do you make that determination? And do you have a, a fun per or a dollar per fun uh, ratio that you try to adhere to? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I think it, it's all just, I mean, it is really silly, right? The price of games. Like it's, how do you quantify it? Vampire Survivors, three ninety nine sold millions. Yeah. Like if you don't look at it, look at it at the other end. How much does each game deserve to make, really? If you're trying to judge it on a certain merit, or, you know, there might be a game that only made twenty thousand dollars that had a hundred hours of work in it, and there's a game that made millions with, you know, a weekend of work like Vampire Survivors. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you know, what's fair? What is fair in the pricing? And I think it's um. I don't know. It, it's it's really hard because sometimes I'll think, man, I spent ninety bucks on this. This was worth it. And sometimes you buy Duke Nukem Forever, and you know, you you complain about the price of games because it was terrible, and there's no refunds back then. Yeah. yeah. And um, it just it does seem a little silly. Did they ever so, fix that game? Is that a game you could play today and go, ah, oh, they sure no. they sure did ride on that game finally. <laughs> No, I, the I, issues I, were not technical. Okay. The issues were intrinsic to... It's a good question. It was before we got... It was pre-No Man's Sky, who, you know, Sean... The video game industry should be really mad at Sean Murray. Because <laughs> he's really showing them what's possible and how yeah. big a dicks the game industry can be about their games, honestly. He's like... And not just, like, the big industry, like, everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know a game more supported than No Man's Sky at this point mm -hmm. for free. Um, than that game. You so. guys realize, okay, so a couple of, I agree with you, first of all. Second of all, Duke Nukem Forever came out in 20 freaking 11, June that year. Yeah. It has been a minute since that thing yeah. happened. Um, all yeah. right, so launched on PS3, Windows 360, and according to this, they never did much after. I mean, they didn't, they didn't update it. I'm used to this, I am used to this new idea of if you really want your players to support you, you got to tweak until you're good. And they didn't do it. it yeah, or at bummer. least make good on fixing it. Like uh, you know, CD Projekt Red did did made good. You know, they want to they even want to release a sequel. It's like we don't care. This game's going to succeed. You know. Yeah, but as John and, says, like, is it was it even technical in this case? It was more like just the shit. It was bad writing, bad level design, bad. The shooting it was felt bad. Like Every the shoot, like the controls were janky. The story was dumb, and it just didn't feel awesome. Like it felt yeah. like. Like also it was even at the time that it was old, you know, like it was just old engine, old yeah. Like, and I mean for that era. Mm -hmm. The the tricky thing with Duke Nukem Forever is you are you are dealing with something that isn't. It was a, a wish fulfillment, right? Like it was a game that it was highly anticipated after Duke Nukem 3D came out. It was in development forever. And then it ended up just no it's never happening and then gearbox swoops in and goes no it's happening we're releasing it mm -hmm. so you're getting something that is already kind of of the past so i do feel like to a degree you do have to check expectations at the door that you're getting something you're getting the revival of something that was old but it just was it just wasn't fun like mm -hmm. it, it just wasn't good <laughs> on any level, not even on a, oh, well, you know, if I pretend that it was 10 years ago, it's fun. It was just not good, period. Um, and it's a little tricky with Duke Nukem Forever like that, but you can also, uh, their game Aliens Colonial Marines was like this, where that was an oh, anticipated yeah. title. The issues were technical, and if I remember correctly, they did not fix them. Mm -mm. So no. uh, it's a pretty common Thing. Talk about a company. Gearbox as an example again. Talk about a company that relied entirely on the strength of Borderlands one, two, and three, and beyond. I mean that IP, and and let everything else just kind of hang out there a little bit. I know they publish now, which is not the development arm, but back then that was them making it, and both of those games were just bad, and they just moved on. Like, all right, well, 
We got Borderlands money. Don't worry about it. That's how it felt. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, yeah. but that's how it felt. Anyway, we hope this answers your very good question, Tez. Thank you for that. And if you are in our Patreon and you occasionally see these uh, posts that pop up asking for your questions, that's why. And we'll read them right here on the show. More details at patreon.com slash core show. Right? <laughs> I think so. I didn't mean to say that in a hesitant <laughs> Is that way. that how they reach us? Yeah. Probably. Hold on. There it is. Core show. Try I always forget. I hate that someone else had the name core and I, I'm still mad about him, but heard about Just it. Just dial 10 hands yep. into your telephone device and leave us a message. You bastards. Let's discuss the games we played this week. John and I, uh, I read your Twitter post today and it made me real, or yesterday maybe, it made me realize yep. you and I are almost 100% in sync on at least one issue with Atomic Heart. <laughs> Which yeah, we played this about week. Atomic Heart. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about Atomic Heart. John and I both played it. Um, it was uh, it's on Game Pass, which is where I played it, and uh, also the first game that I tested the, uh, the Steam Deck Game Pass streaming on it worked great, no issues. Um, and I also played it on PC, uh, back and forth a little bit. Anyway, I think you're a little farther than me, but Atomic Heart is weird, and I mean that in both good and bad ways. It is really weird looking <laughs> and 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 and, it, and that's the good stuff the design is crazy cool of the enemies a lot of the environments the some of the concepts are just wacky tobacco nut nutty shooter stuff that i feel like i haven't seen since bioshock um is what it reminds me of a lot or even to some degree it reminds me of like a bj blaskowitz game this feels like uh, one of those wolfenstein sequels yeah, and uh, in 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 and in some ways that's in a good way. In one very particular way, they don't even come close to B.J. Blaskowitz and his personality. And if there was, and so basically, here's what John said, and I agree with him. If there was ever a game that made a better argument for having a silent protagonist, it's Atomic Heart. Freaking shut that guy up! I don't even think it's the voice actor. He's fine. It's what they give him to say. It's terrible. Just horrible. Listen, I hate when he talks. The glove is fine. When, Jay, when Charles is talking, I don't mind it. But when our main uh, protagonist says words, I'm, I throw up a little. It's, he's really bad, in my opinion. Uh, so I wanted to get that out early. But the game itself, it plays fun. It shoots great. There's, there's some of the weirdest enemy designs I've ever seen. The actual combat's okay. It's fine. Um, he has a way, this act, not this actor, but this character has a way of making what should be this epic, mysterious, Bioshock-like experience feel like throwaway. It's hard to explain, but it really kind of, not ruins it for me, but it comes close to ruining it for me. So, John, I'll let you add on to that because to me, it's the biggest flaw in the game. It's a problem. Yeah, uh, this game is really weird for every very cool like oh neat you're totally nailing the aesthetic decision they make there is an equally like what the hell are you doing decision <laughs> on the back end of it yeah um the the primary issue is definitely with the protagonist who is just absolutely mind-numbingly confusing he goes from being happy and quirky and maybe we're supposed to think that this guy's a little silly to just being a dick for no reason uh out of nowhere and it's just very strangely written now we are dealing with a game that i'm sure was translated and maybe we're dealing with some translation issues too um but also the the quantity of dialogue in this game is on par with other titles that you know how I feel about, like Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> this is a game that likes to interrupt dialogue with more dialogue so that you can then get back to the original dialogue you were listening to wow. and then be introduced to yet more dialogue on the back end of it. Yeah. I was trying to figure out the convoluted... And it's not terrible, but it's menus and it's tutorial and you've never seen it before. Um, like talent specking and weapon crafting menus of the game. And during it, a vending machine is like, sorry, Scott, fucking my ear. 
the entire time I'm trying to do this. And I mean that literally. Yeah. The entire time I'm reading the menu, I'm just hearing a robot voice in my ear going, Oh, yeah, look at it. Look at Oh, it's so good when you look at this menu. Ugh. Oh, I hated it. I'm like, what is, what is this? Yeah. How am I supposed to concentrate? You're not wrong. On what we're doing in this game and take it seriously while this is happening and it wasn't that funny of a joke it was initially at first i was like oh haha he's getting attacked by the sex robot but then it keeps going and it just keeps going and going and going and it is it is way too much mm. and it's not from a prudish standpoint like i'm all for the joke like of course this society made sex robots why not but I'm trying to play your game, and for a game that takes its primary inspirations from Half-Life, from Bioshock, <laughs> from great games where protagonists know to shut the hell up, it is shocking that they decided to include so much non-stop talking. It's like, here's a tense, very environmental, dark scene. So naturally, it's the most logical time for this doofy ass soldier to be arguing with his hand. Mm. And it, it constantly takes me out of the environment, which I think is incredible. And so that's that's the part that's frustrating about it is because for all those things that I just complained about, the enemies are kind of wild and cool. I like that, you know, when you swing the axe at the android bodies, you see tears and rips in them. And I like that they move not quite like humans. And I like that they're unsettling looking. I love how the environments look. Mm -hmm. um, I love the atmosphere of it. I think the moves could potentially be cool, although, and you're showing it right now on the stream, mm. there is a whirlwind axe attack that makes me feel... Uh, sick and i don't even get sick playing first person shooters every it's time i do it's it just starts really disorienting them. super disorienting yeah. i don't like it it's like playing a fury warrior or uh, a barbarian in diablo but in first person and you're like oh this is a challenging job i don't think this is good um but there are there are really really neat things in here and i just feel like the dialogue and the characterization are constantly at odds with the stuff in here that is cool. I agree, and, yeah. And yeah. I, I think it's really unfortunate because I think it takes a game... I don't think Atomic Heart is an exceptional game. No. I think it's probably a good game. It sure had potential a, to be, though, because the way this looks and feels, if you just had really good writing and really good acting and really good whatever around it, you could have real. I mean, you know, put it in, put it in the hands of a Half Life writer or something. You'd have it. You'd have a game, dude. It would be better. I still don't think it would be exceptional. Like, it still doesn't quite know what it wants to be. There's still some really confusing. It's like, hey, what? Are, you swim through this gel. Hey, here's eight different ways to unlock a door. Like, they introduce you to the lock picking mini game, and you're like, oh, okay. So I guess this is how we're gonna pick locks. And then they're like, oh, here's a different lock. Mm. Now you gotta play this lights game. And you're like, okay, so it's lock picking, and then this lights game, and then they go, hey, here's another door. Oh, they this love one you that. gotta rotate panels yeah. to open, and you're like, okay, so it's those two ways. Then you get to another door. It's like this one needs a key. You're like, okay, so this one needs a key. This one's rotating panels. This one's this, and then you get to another door, and it's like this one needs a password. You're just like, how many of these damn doors are there going to be? How many mechanics are you going to introduce me to? They're kind of like, a, they're kind of disguising puzzle mechanics in these locks and I think that's a mistake because gamer gamer memory is that locks are a thing and we deal with them, but we deal with them the same in games. Like we just once we know, then we know and then we do it every time and it's either build up the skill and fall out or it's find the right key in some other game or it's learn the combination or whatever it is. And this game's like, what if we gave you like 15 missed puzzles, but they were all with locks? It's really weird. It's a it's yeah. an odd choice. I agree. And and it's one of those cases where again, your super quippy protagonist is very quick to be like Oh, come on, another different type of lock? I guess I gotta figure this out too, huh? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, okay, you're complaining about what I'm complaining about. Maybe the people who are programming the game should be self-aware enough to know that if literally the character in the situation is annoyed by it, so will the players yeah. be. Yeah. And that maybe is something you shouldn't do. 
So um, I think this game is okay. I was excited to stream it when it first came out. Yeah. And then I very quickly was like, you know, I don't need to keep streaming this game. And I'm, I don't know how much I have in me to finish it. I think this is a perfect Game Pass game. Yeah. Um, because I don't think this is a, again, going to game value, it's weird. I don't think this is worth $60, $70. No, that, see, that's, I agree. That's the other thing is if you're paying full price for this game, I would, I think I feel bad. Because it's not good enough. It's not. It's just, and I'm not even that far to make a full judgment. But I, I think you kind of, I mean, you have a taste for what they're going to give you pretty early. And even though visually I keep getting surprised and I like that about it, this feels like 39 or something. Yeah, it's not terrible. I, I And it's going to kind of seem like that's what I'm saying. But I think that's because the expectation versus reality is that I think the expectation is higher than what was delivered. But that doesn't mean that what's here is bad. I think the game looks really cool, except for the weird birds that for some reason oh, yeah, look awful. And weird. then they were like, yeah, these birds are good enough. We're going to put them right in front of the camera. And I'm like, I think that bird model's flying backwards and upside down. And they're like, yeah, put it right in front of the screen. That's perfect. Yeah, let's F it um, up for, for all to see. Um, I know you didn't mention it, but I, it's just because I saw it just now and I wanted to make sure to say it before I forgot. I like how you loot shit. I like that yeah. left arm, suck it out with electricity thing with your glove. Uh, opens all the drawers like a vacuum and then all the stuff in your in inventory. I think that's really cool. But I think that. that's also a perfect example of what my criticism for the game is. Mm. That is a really cool innovation to not have to open each individual drawer and then press a button to loot it, to just hold F and like scan over it and open it up. And yet somehow, despite how easy that is, despite how effective that seems to be, Looting is still tedious in this game. There's still somehow too much stuff to open, and it still takes too much time between holding up my hand in the you're a loser symbol and then putting it back down and going, okay, there's still some drawer that I didn't mouse over properly on this cabinet that I got to go and now hover over. It doesn't feel like on the back end it actually saved any time to the press F to open loot the drawer. So it's this like, oh, this is innovative and cool, but then in practice, oh no, you know, it's kind of just on par with everything else we've had. Yeah, I give you that. I, I found it easier on controller, uh, the looting, I mean, in particular, because I was doing the Game Pass test on my um, Steam Deck. So I tried with the controller, and that actually kind of felt good because it's just a simple little, I move my finger up here and hold it. Controllers are good for that. I feel like when I was doing it on the desktop and I, had to, and I was using the F key, that drove me nuts. Like it, it just yeah. felt like, oh, I have to hold this down any longer and I'm already holding it. Oh, double tapped it. Didn't mean to. Okay. Let go. Start over. Like there's that whole, there is some rigmarole with that. And yeah, that, that is a, that is probably where I land the most, which is there is something here that's very rad just under the surface <laughs> uh, of a bunch of, of like just bad old video game problems that I think we fixed in some other kinds of games. And this game just like didn't learn from those. I don't know. It's very weird. Anyway, I think it's worth checking out if you have Game Pass. If you don't, I would not pay full price for this game. There's my review. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's that's probably the best way to to say it. Yeah. And uh, I have heard because I had when I did that tweet, I did have people responding and make comments that maybe you should change the language. This game isn't like Yakuza. Like Yakuza is one of those games where you boot it up and Yakuza straight up asks you, do you want to hear this in Japanese or right. do you want to hear this translated? Which always tells me that like, hey, there's something to be gleamed from playing this in its original language. Um, people have told me this game is better to not listen to in English, that if you just put it translated, it's gonna it's gonna play better with subtitles. But whenever that's just a menu option I have to think of and go do, it doesn't quite hit the same as when the game's like, hey, this game's probably better in its native language instead of, you know, this translation to English, which sometimes falls apart because there are times where somebody says something and I go, what did they just say? I don't, I don't think those words go together in the way that they think those words go together. So I yeah. think there's some glaring translation issues with there this is. game as well. I, you know, and again, they're, it, it's all competently acted. I can just tell the source material's rough. Did you yeah. guys meet the mommies? 
Yeah, uh, briefly. They didn't do anything. They come up a bunch. I heard there was a six hour sex scene in the game. Oh. Six hours? <laughs> I, what? Really? I didn't I didn't see it, but I did have a cabinet try to have sex with me. Yeah, there's a horny. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's with it's with the mummies, the twin mummy twins. Oh. Okay, I haven't seen them. I guess I'm not that far. No, you yeah. did. They gave you the key to the car that the robot. Oh, carried. those that's two. What, that's what everybody's all excited about because they're tall lady robots. Oh, okay. I did see them. You know one. how people get with tall people? Like mm -hmm. this has been an issue ever since Resident Evil Village. As soon as someone's tall, the internet is gonna <laughs> just get on its knees and make them taller. I guess I don't know. It's I'm six really four. I need I need some robots. of this tall love you're talking about. I'm I've been tall my whole life and. I don't know. Maybe you should play it till you get to that scene and then sort of judge. Maybe you'll like it. I'll just go more. stream yeah. it or I'll just go find somebody's video of it. I'm not sure I can handle it. <laughs> but go like the, the, the upgrade cabinet that's all horny and stuff, I, I think they think they're funnier than they are, the writers of this. It's, none of it really landed on me. And maybe it's a translation yeah. issue. Maybe not. But it just was like, really? That's mm. a joke. The only joke I laughed at was the guy's talking and he says, the, the, the your your robot hand goes, uh, well, later on, we need to go try and open that door using the blah, blah, blah that you just acquired. And he goes, all right, well, give me a second. I got to take out these guys and then I'll give you a hand. <laughs> and then makes a stupid little laugh at the end <laughs> about his hand. And that's dumb as hell, but it made me giggle a little. All right. That's as far as you got me, game. You yeah. just aren't funny I, otherwise. I think it's funny we talked about Duke Nukem on this uh, in this episode, because to me, the main character feels like if you took a theater nerd. And you said, hey, you're going to play Duke Nukem. Ad lib some lines for me. And like, this is a theater nerd's vision of Duke Nukem cool. Like, there's literally a scene where he goes through a big crash and then just lights up a cigarette because, yeah, because this cool dude is going to smoke right after a crash because that's what cool guys do. And it just feels so forced and fake. And you can see how somebody thought it was cool. But it feels 100% artificial. Like, it doesn't... It, you can do that, but there's a way to do that and feel cool. And this game does not do that. This feels extremely forced every time the main character is supposed to be cool. Also, his catchphrase is crispy critters. Yeah. Just... He, he said it twice, and I haven't played the game very much, so I imagine it's going to be happening a couple times. They're really trying to make crispy critters work, and... That is not a cool phrase. They're trying to make it a thing. It ain't working. Yes, it isn't. Um, nope. Um. Anyway, it's it's again Game Pass. Yes, it, man, it looks fantastic. Like right? selling why you know you look at screenshots and video. It's like it's easy to see if this sells a ton. It's easy to see why the weapons look wild. Like it, it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the art design and world is is super cool, and I imagine a lot of people are going to hear. Oh, what a game are they talking about? Atomic Heart? They're going to see the pictures and they're going to go, there's no way this game's bad. Like, Yeah, look no, at it, it looks though. insane. Look at it. And it's that's because beautiful. it looks so good. It looks good every second anything's happening. It's just another reminder that that does not make a great game. It can make a, a better game, <laughs> but not an amazing game. So I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I get further and I change my mind right now. I'm just feeling a little bit middling about it. Um... We'd love to know what you guys think out there. Send us your, your emails and your thoughts. I was going to say, I was expecting, because I was told that there was a bunch of Mick Gordon tracks in this, and I haven't heard any of them. Oh, he! I think he did synth work here. It's not metal. Really? Yeah, oh, he's, he's... Maybe a, I am he's, hearing he's, it. He's, he's, a, he's um, more than one genre kind of person. I, I, I've looked at his Twitter feed and stuff, and he'll talk about synths and, and all that kind of business, too. He so maybe I have metal. heard it. I don't know. None of it's yeah. been jumping out I at did me. hear one killer song. I don't remember where it was, but I heard it. I was like, oh, okay. This soundtrack's got something to do. So mm. uh, music seemed pretty good, too, like uh, when Doom, I noticed it. Sure. Doom gets a lot of credit for being metal, but there's actually a lot of synth. That's true. He used yeah. in the Doom soundtrack, and like nobody talks about that because the guitars are what stand out, and it's part of the brand identity. But there's actually a lot of synth in Doom, his Doom soundtracks yeah. too. That main that main track where it reproduces the original Doom uh, MIDI song, mm -hmm. oh, man, that gets me going like nothing else. You need me to shovel snow? Fine. Just let me have that in my earbuds. I'm <laughs> Were you listening to that? Well, I do a lot. Not <laughs> not this week. Kim, when I was out there and hurt my back, it was just me 
being dumb and my wife filmed part of it. This is up there ripping and tearing snow until it is done. That's a short core idea game. Yeah, getting snow off the roof. Shoveler, doom, doom, snow shoveler. Sure, I'll do. I'd play that. You kidding? Yeah, no, you go. They should make it like actually where it's like you know because glory kills you kind of zoom to the enemy and tear it apart. But in 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 doom shoveler. You zoom to the show and then shovel it. I like Doom Shoveler. That's a great name. Yeah, I'm, be, yeah. we're keeping it. We're doing. Is it. there a snow shoveling short card game that seems to? There be are games with. So when you play uh, House Flipper, there are levels where you have to clear snow, but they're not like fancy snow moving. It's, it's like yeah, no. We need one just dedicated to snow shoveling because there is a satisfaction when there's snow everywhere versus yeah. when you get that path. All nicely carved out, or your laneway. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! I shouldn't have said anything. No, I'd love that. Next million dollar chorecore idea right here. I'll bet those able to do like a Calvin and Hobbes esque, where it goes all around the yard (laughs) before it gets to the car, or build snowmen around the car while you're there as soon as you're moving snow. Hell yeah! Or my neighbor made a giant penis in his yard the other day. A great big wiener. Oh, he did. Oh yeah! I should have taken a picture of it. I I couldn't from where I could see it very well, but. Big old wiener. That's almost like, I don't think you're allowed to make wieners in the snow. (laughs) I don't know. As far as I know, it's legal. I I never tried. I never thought to try. (laughs) I can think of a few. I can think of a few parents are probably pissed, but um, I don't think it's illegal as far as I know. Maybe the HOA doesn't like it. I don't know. I'd have to look into it. But <laughs> sorry, did you put a penis there? No, my snowman fell apart. Yeah, that'll be an extra Thank forty bucks a month. Thank you for reminding me of a trauma that I was really upset about. Here's the thing, though. Uh, milk is sideways. Those those people that made um, uh, lawnmower sim, they could probably do a pretty good snow removal simulator because the idea that I would want would be yards or you know driveways, yes, but also street contracts like the city, like we had here. We just had four feet of snow, which we haven't had in a decade all in one storm Mm -hmm. and Bo gets that kind of stuff all the time. But what you do is you set it up so that you're contracted by the neighborhood. You do, you do little jobs for people's things, but you upgrade your, your thing till you're driving like a, uh, an SUV, what are they called? ATV with a big shovel in front. And the neighborhood hires you to just clear out the streets, not hit the cars. We have have pickups and big construction vehicles all winter long, clearing roads. I would buy this game. And Ooh, hey, not, it's not just uh, in, get Mr. Plow memorabilia oh, or Plow King. Mr. Plow uh, and Plow yeah, King. yeah, that's a great t- uh, brand tie-in. Shoot, this is the this is the future. Let's make it in a weekend because that's all it takes to make a video game one yes. weekend. Once I uh, learn everything, then maybe. <laughs> but I just like the meme. I know that you know it doesn't do that. <laughs> I just like the meme. Uh, all right, let's move on to other games we played. This is some stuff I played on my own. I played a game called Dust and Neon. And I'm going to shock you with what it's about. It's about uh, the mashing up of a Western and cyberpunk. Um, that what does... would you like about such a universe, Scott? Well, you'd think... I like both those things a lot. Like the, the Those are two genre settings I could spend all day with in film and books and TV and whatever, and video games. Love it all. Yeah. Um, but this game is decidedly a roguelike game. It is one of those, and you you got a base, and this professor dude that sends you on these missions, and the missions are randomized, and when you go out and do them, you live as long as you can, and if you die, you come back, you bring some of your stuff back, and you apply it to upgrades, and then if you finish it, you have more to apply to upgrades, and you get random weapons when you start, and you take a pistol and a shotgun with you, and eventually you get un- you unlock a third weapon uh, for like a sniper, and it's uh, this top-down, isometric three-quarter view looking thing, And you play this cowboy robot who is cleaning out uh, all the trouble in town. And uh, it is a fun loop. It's very well, really well done. Um, Some have complained that it's, this should be 15 bucks and it's like 29. I know, I can see why they would say that because it is, it's, there's nothing here that's like mind blowingly different than a lot of games like it um, other than the aesthetic and the setting and all of that. And so I, I think maybe oh, it like is Hollow Knight. A, a little bit like that. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get shit for that. <laughs> Email generator right there. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Engagement. Yeah. You're welcome. I just brought more engagement to the show. John's an engagement farmer and just brought in a huge load from the, from the <laughs> farm. Isn't Hollow Knight a good game? Hollow Knight is supposed to be an Some excellent people game. people think so, yeah. <laughs> I don't like it for the same reasons John doesn't, and we get shit every time about Hollow Knight. Mm. I'll I bet played it. you should play it, Bo, and... 
then we would have either a complete agreement or we'd have somebody who's on the side of <laughs> yeah the the people who like hollow knight which is the majority to be clear need yeah. an advocate so yeah. you should play it they do need yeah they they are the way the, the, we are punching up okay it's not the other way yeah. around anyway um this is uh it's what you think it is it's go out shoot a bunch of stuff um it's dual stick shooter which i like i also like the uh kind of methodic control feels a bit more like a hotline miami kind of combat not quite as deadly or as immediate because you, you have hit points and all that. But that kind of like visceral, like, oh, shit, he's in the room. Boom, 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 kill it kind of feeling is in this. Um, and I think the levels are fun. It's got this uh, this uh, cell-shaded art style to everything. I think it works fine for what it is. Um, the meshing of an old Western and cyberpunk ideas is kind of cool. Does and... it play well? Because I just saw in the gameplay on the screen you – seem to have a perfect aim on something and miss four times uh this was someone else and i don't know why they missed they shouldn't have missed. oh okay i i, would <laughs> like you right, I was just i would have watched a lot of it looks like, like you have a cone of fire yeah and he's using his keyboard i think which i do not recommend the, i would play the, tri the triangle is a cone of fire yeah they, it, it, exactly so you're gonna have a percentage of missing it bo's right about that um in this case that was the shotgun and they all actually have kind of a cone, so some of them are better, some have better long range, some guns. And the guns drop and feel a lot like they do in Borderlands. They even color a lot like they do. So you'll get random guns while you're out, and you'll unlock blueprints while you're out. And uh, would play this with a controller for sure. I don't... Does it, it does look like top-down uh, Borderlands. Yeah, it is kind of that. That's a good way of putting it, actually. Except it's a roguelike, but it's kind it's of... It's a multiplayer, and it's a roguelike, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, I had a really good time with it. I, I think it's really fun. Board. The developer, you know, uh, all things exposed or all transparency, the developer sent me a code, so I didn't pay the 30 bucks that other people are complaining about. But um, well, that's nice of them. Yeah, it was yeah. really nice. And it's really fun. I like it. Oh, and uh, right out of the gate, just a perfect little Steam Deck game. Just, uh, just perfect on that device. Did they know Bo and I are on the show as well? They, I don't know if they do. <laughs> no, they, of course they do. Some of these people, I just get stuff, stuff just shows up in the mail. And it's usually because, like, I have a relationship oh, you're with on, the, Yeah, you're on a list, right? I'm I got reached list. out to be put on a TTRPG list, but I didn't want all the reading. Oh, that's a lot of reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to be, you know, like, here, can you, you know, it's just not what we're doing. If sure. we were doing that show, then maybe. But Nobody wants to send me anything. They've heard my thoughts on Hollow Knight. <laughs> Oh no! It's just yeah. The Hollow Knight devs have really got around, and they've they've. Uh, I don't send him anything. He doesn't give John do I shit. think what most people would be thinking if that's what you think of Hollow Knight, you're gonna tear my game with a new butthole. Could be, but we all do that. I, to you some know, degree. be yourselves though. You know, think what you think, and you know, that's what people want. Cards, cards lie where they may. We don't need free games. And we I'm happy to say, cards. I will say, I think this is a really good one of these. You know what you're getting into. It's a roguelike. Go shoot some stuff. Come back. Improve. That's the game. Is it? Is it enough game for 30 bucks compared to other games that are closer to 15 that do very similar things? I think that's a valid criticism. It's a little expensive. So I would say that. Now I'll never get a code again. Just kidding. They're, they're, <laughs> yep, no, we, done. We, we, we are worth a way it. to put an end to that. Yeah, they'd rather. We, we, we are worth it. We get people, the, the number of people that drop into my Twitch chat that are like, you got us to, you got me to buy this game or on Twitter. It's a lot. Oh, it happens a lot. Yeah. Sense. And it also I behooves mean, us to be honest about what our feelings are. I'm never going to tell you guys a game's good if it sucks. I should be on the free VR uh, list for Meta. I think I can count that is like true. 50 they people should. that are like, I bought my VR headset. Help, uh, how do I start? Like, I get DMs from people. Help, help me set up Skyrim. I bought my VR headset. Like, send some merch our way. I'll move some VR headsets for you there, Mark. Yeah. Legitimately, you are a, I hate the terms, like influencer and stuff like that, but you influence people's decisions based on your passion or your tastes and it's real so i think it's a sweet spot where it's it's cheap enough that someone could buy one and try it out but it's expensive enough to understandably hold back right, right like right. like a lot of people do and so there's a i can push them off the cliff <laughs> you know getting someone to buy a video game is not that expensive it's pretty easy we buy all kinds of games we don't play but anyways all that to say sure yeah codes now Let's watch this. I'm going to show something to the stream and you guys will see it as well. It's one of my favorite things I almost forgot to say about the game. When you've finished firing at something, the reload is awesome. Just check this out. Oh, yeah. I was noticing that. It's very cool. So he fires a shotgun. I thought that was very cool too. See, yeah. he puts it up on screen like that. And that happens with all the gun types. It's very cool. Little tiny detail. Doesn't really affect gameplay, but there's a visceralness to it. 
also just the shooting feels meaty and dangerous and hardcore and things break and you're just like oh my gosh i just tore that robot a new butthole and i don't know it's good it's real good Anyway, I like it. Neon and Dust, or Dust and Neon on Steam. Can I just uh, ask a question about it? Because it does look interesting, but a lot of what you've shown visually didn't look too, too intense. Like, does it get, Oh yeah. does it ramp up in intensity? Definitely yeah. does. Because a lot of, you know, like those Hades white knuckle moments when you got a bunch of dudes on the screen, you're trying not to get hit. Yeah, definitely like more, I, you know, I don't know if I've hit Hades level of intensity, but I've definitely hit um, zones in this thing. This is very early for this video. It's like, I think the first level is all. Yeah. But I've gotten to like. places where many different types, you got to learn how to dodge really well. Some of these robots shoot back. Some of them lob huge bombs at you. And then when you get them all in a room doing them the same shit at once, and these roller guys are coming after you, it gets really intense. There's also a cover mechanic um, that doesn't give you 100% coverage. Well, it depends, I think, on what you're hiding behind. Um, oh, it's like a half cover, three quarters. Kind of that, like yeah. That. X commie yeah. style, I, I suppose, except without the, the, the turn based. But it's it definitely ramps up, and the rewards do too to compensate. And I don't know. I like it for that and i think the loot's good it's random or at least feels you know it feels diablo-ish when you're picking shit up and um yeah just a good little game 30 bucks good eh mileage may vary but if this was 19 i think i could easily recommend this at 19 like full-throated recommendation because i think that oh the whole right. throat yeah my entire throat not just the little piece <laughs> <I did. Yeah. laughs> You know, I, I reserve my throat. Is uh, that a new ranking system? I give this half throat <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> yeah, how much of my throat are you willing to uh, take at the moment? Anyway, uh, that's that. I also played a game which I am very excited to get back to. I've been thinking about it constantly. A uh, game I've had in my library for a while. I guess I probably picked it up in a sale. I was in the mood for a point-and-click adventure, and I think I found one that is speaking my language, and it's called Strange Land. It is weird as hell. Um, point and click adventure, all kind of hand drawn art looking stuff. Um, almost, how do I explain this? Like bad art on purpose. So mm. kind of like the stoner kid at, at uh, sitting next to you in detention is scrawling this on his desk kind of stuff. And he's maybe got issues at home and he's taking some drugs and he's got some problems. This feels like that kid made this. Um, it's from a developer that's known for having really good cred when it comes to point and click adventures. And so, um, you know, that, that, that part is already a thing. Uh, but it's this weird world. You're not sure. I'm not, I still don't know where I am, but I'm in some kind of nether world. It's like between life and death. Um, it's called strange land. It's kind of built like a demonic effed up, um, uh, what, what is it? What do you call the, the carnival, like a carnival or like a, yeah. Uh, it's an amusement park kind of thing, a fair, yeah, okay. all that kind of stuff. And it's all just real twisted. It's all voice acted. Um, everything is spoken. Mm. There's a girl in it who keeps jumping down a well and killing herself every time you see her, and it just keeps repeating. You don't know why. And so you talk to these strange, otherworldly denizens who are sort of like trying to give you advice. And it's a lot of sort of ask the right questions, have them drop the right thing. Now that fits with this, and I can take it back and open a deal. It's all of those things. But this game it currently overwhelmingly positive reviews on steam and i wanted to play it on the deck it plays great on there no issues and it is a weird like look at this guy this old guy under the tree i love this art but you know what i'm saying about this art it's like shitty but good it's like i don't know how to explain yeah it. i know i know what you mean like it it's not aesthetically pleasing no but somehow it, but it's, it's right for quality. what it is yeah it's yeah, hard to explain yeah. um, a lot of branching dialogue a lot of weird obscure things although you never feel like it's so weird you don't know what to do like when i played uh what was that fleshy thing that came out earlier this year um can't scorn. think of it scorn scorn i liked scorn which was basically a first person uh adventure puzzler type click point and click kind of game in a, in a way um except it just you never knew what the frick anything did because it was completely like you couldn't intuit anything. It was like, well, there's a big flesh hole. I guess something goes in there, and that's about as good as you could do. Whereas I have to, I have to give it to chat. They nailed it. Uh, Adhesive Wombat says it looks like a corn album cover. Yes, yeah. yes, that is spot on. Yep. That is a hundred percent 
Sometimes something is just correct. Yeah. That is the correct way to well, describe well, this game's look. Well, absolutely well said. Um, you do a little backtracking, which I don't mind if the story's good. Look at these people here, for example. Like, just so weird. It's like Tool and Corn got together and got drunk and then yeah. made a game. Uh, hmm. It's very, very weird and very cool. If that's if any of this sounds like it's your jam aesthetically, uh, so far the story and the writing is very good. The puzzles are good. Not too hard, not too obscure, but just challenging enough. I feel like I'm decently far in, maybe an hour and a half. And I don't think it's a giant game or anything, but this is usually on sale. You'll find it on sale a bunch, and I would recommend it highly, especially on sale. It is called Strange Land, and it scratched a very particular itch I had uh, the other day looking for a game like this. And I already had it in my, in my uh, library, so trying to go through that stuff. All right. Um, Finally, I just checked in on Traveler's Rest, which is this uh, amazing little chore core game. Um, oh, I have to, by law, I have to play this. Work harder! There we go. Um, this game where you run a tavern, and it's called Traveler's Rest. It's this, uh, you, you run this tavern, and there's a lot of mechanics about how to make beer and make food, and you cook, and you do all this stuff. Then you open your tavern, and you feed the people, and you kind of have a mini game there. And then outside, you got farming, and stone to chop down and coal to get and then machines you can have outside that are refining materials for you it's all that stuff so you know think stardew valley but very focused on running a tavern and that's the game i've talked about it on the show before but i i do really like it recommend it it's early access getting close to 1.0 and they've refined the hell out of it it's real real good right now i actually just picked this up uh, I haven't played it yet, but I just picked it up. So good to hear that it's doing well because uh, I'm I'm gonna be playing it soon. You'll love this. Point. Yeah, you'll love this. Yeah. It's uh it's one of those games done right, in my opinion. It it, it gets you know all my Animal Crossing needs, <laughs> whatever that means. It, those are all fulfilled. <laughs> um, all my animal needs. <laughs> you you hire employees to do a bunch of the stuff you don't feel like doing um later on it's there's some magic oh there's a broom that's going on by itself kind of harry potter style that's cleaning up when people puke or drop stuff sometimes you have to whip people uh, who are being dicks and get them out of the place because they're being jerks. i mean yep sometimes you just gotta do it yep there's sometimes that. you gotta have a magic broom sometimes you just gotta whip people i yep, guess yep and you've there's, talked about this one before yeah this is a while ago it's probably a year and a half ago a, yeah what do I it was quite a bit it was it's been in early access for I think already two years or something, but they're, they're constantly updating it. Their art styles change like three times or something, or I shouldn't say re change. It's just refined and been made better. It's really good shape hmm. right now. It's all pixels and stuff, but it's uh wonderful on steam deck. I think their plan is to have this everywhere. It'll be on switch and all that other stuff right now. It's just steam, I believe, but anyway, very good game. Good that one. That's to... really cool. Glad yeah. I checked back into it. That sounds and like you your picked jam. it up, John. Hmm. I yeah, did, see. but I haven't hmm. played it yet. Is there any co-op in that game? I don't think there is. Maybe. I think there actually is. I think there's two-person co-op where you are the innkeeper and the wife, or at least it's coming, because I, I remember when I looked at it and saw it, I saw something about it. Yeah, it's something like that. I think you're right. Like, they were they were holding hands. They looked like a lovely a lovely couple. Major update, local co-op. So it has local. Oh, right local, now. like, couch co-op. Okay. I guess they, it just seems like it has, like, a go-out-explore... I don't know if there's fight monsters in it, but you level up somehow. What's the level? Yeah, up you do have levels. Building or is that from fighting? No, the level. Well, it's from everything. So everything you do gives you level increase. So, um, and there are a bunch of areas to explore. There is some combat, although I haven't done much of that yet. Um, there are parts of the town that are currently blocked off by guards or other uh, obstructions that you will eventually get through. And um, the one thing I really like is if I open my bar or I open the tavern, whenever I open it, I can have it open just for like 12 customers because I want to get through the remaining beer stock or something. And then I can close it and go out and do shit all the rest of the day. And no, there's no like problem with doing that. Um, you'll, you'll it's learn. It's not like when you worked a retail job and you closed the store to do something <laughs> right. irresponsible and there's a line out front when you get back. Exactly. You're like, oh, please don't call anybody. Yeah, exactly. So you can go out and do a lot of this adventuring and gathering and stuff. And then go back and open again. Like I'd like to open at night because I can run the fire and they get they buy more drinks and the drinks are more expensive. So I make more money at night. But you can open at 7 a.m. if you want. 
And those weirdos will come, <laughs> come in. Yeah, you got to appeal to your, your Barneys as well as your Homers. Yeah. The problem is the Barneys are sometimes a little rude and you have to go hit them with a broom and stuff like that. But it does feature that. And a lot and of the... Just rude... combining it. Now it's whipping with the magic. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's definitely a broom, but I can never. I don't. I don't have the magic broom yet. So every time I watch video of someone who's further than me, I get a little jealous. But it motivates me to want to keep playing. But see that that mine right there. There's some way to unlock that, unfreeze whatever that thing is in there. There's like so much little mysteries, uh, even th at this stage. So anyway, I've really high hopes for this final game, and um, think a lot of people are going to be talking about it soon enough. So. It's very cool. Currently in early Is access. Is your main and... character customizable, or does he just look like uh, Peter Capaldi, Doctor? <laughs> no, you can change him. My guy, for example, has a way longer beard. He's redheaded. Has some. Uh, he can be a lady. You can do all that. They have they have a full character creator at the beginning. So you'll spend two hours there probably because you're John Jagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you like to do. Yeah. Uh, it's very Although cool I'm kind of sold on the idea of Peter Capaldi just being the. <laughs> you like your own idea. Wait, no. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a win. I like him too. I liked him with all those pistons in his head in that uh, that movie. Um, the, the Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, yeah. That was great. Uh, all right, moving on to John, who, oh, I'm so happy you're playing this. So how's Hitman World of Assassination treating you? I love Hitman. And the new roguelike mo mode is uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, it is definitely... So if somebody was to be getting into Hitman, mm -hmm. I would probably recommend that they start with the campaign mm -hmm. <laughs> and play through the campaign because the roguelike mode is hard. Yeah. It's, it's, in fact, very, very hard. Um, and it is clearly designed for people that have been telling them, Hey, you know what? I still want to play Hitman, but I'm done because they definitely think I'm better at the game than I am <laughs> at this game. Yeah. I lose a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of, of losses in this one. Um, I do think that it, it's a mode that needs some work. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't think it's, it's as good as it could be. Um, I find the inventory gearing up a little, it's a little punishing on the early end. Like it feels like, I know it's a roguelike thing that things get easier as you go, mm -hmm. but I think it's, I think they have this concept, which I, I know Scott's talked about, it, so I don't want to do too much talking over it again, but basically when you start a campaign, you get bonus objectives and the bonus objectives pay so much more money than just killing somebody like killing somebody 250 mercers is the currency. Yeah. Um, not just a DM little Matt Mercer. And yeah. Uh, yeah, little Matt Mercer's <laughs> come out and go, hi, I'm Matt Mercer. Hello. Um, yeah. And uh, so it's like 250 for killing somebody, but if you do it the certain special way, They'll give you a thousand for that. And then there's like three objectives that you can do. But a lot of the objectives that exist in the game are not achievable early in the game. They'll say like, oh, you have to poison this person, mm -hmm. but they won't give you any poison. Um, and they won't necessarily give you the means. Like I, I assumed on one where it said, okay, you have to kill him with an ice pick. I thought, okay, well clearly that and it even said ice picks can be purchasable from the vendor so i was like okay well i'll go to the vendor uh, vet, the vendor did not have an ice pick and i could be wrong but i do not believe there was an ice pick in that level it was just counting that i had had that acquired and saved the game doesn't recognize objectives that you're capable of completing um it just gives you those objectives and i don't think that's fun i think it would actually be more fun to try and achieve those objectives than to have a bunch of objectives that later on in the game get easier because you have the inventory to do it successfully. Mm. So there's a part of me that feels like it's a little, it could use a little tweaking still. It, it still doesn't feel quite right to me as far as like difficulty and execution, but I would be lying if I didn't say for the past week, this is what got most of my game time i constantly kept coming back to it <laughs> oh and one other minor complaint when you die you need to remember to pick up your money from the table which is stupid uh, yeah. they need to fix that yeah, because it is annoying when you fail in this game 
I don't know if you're like me. I get very angry. Yeah, it pisses me is a very rage-inducing, and it is a long walk back to the operating table to find out how, what a failure you are. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you die, you see your guy fall on the ground, then there's a long-ass loading screen of him looking hurt. Then he's laying on a table and it's blurry. And then she's got to she's got to come on and say, "Oh, Agent Forty Seven, you uh, such a screw yeah, up. She's, Why so she's the bad worst. At, oh, Why Forty Seven, so everything you do. Forty Seven, um, I see you've effed up again. You piece of shit. Forty Seven. She keeps saying, <laughs> "You're so rude. terrible at this, but we're gonna hire you again because we don't have anybody else." Yeah, she's rude. And then you you press B to get up, and then you stretch a little, and then you have to pick up your money. Well, when you're mad. Because you failed because some stupid janitor saw you poison some food after hours of trying to set up the perfect kill. You don't wait for that. You hit Alt F4 and you go yell into a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out that if you, if you do that, instead of taking half your money, they take 100% of your money and you come back with nothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I don't like that. That's not fair. I mean, the, the, the game is, you, you said it earlier, there's no saves, for example. There's no save scumming. The game actually actively encourages save scumming in the normal campaign modes, the old, you know, what the game shipped with, because the game is hard and you're like experimenting. It's like, well, do I kill this guy this way? Oh, I'd rather go back and try it a different way. Like that's there as part of the game. And they even do constant quick saves and then have them right there for you to choose from like the last five quick saves like oh i'll just take this one like the game knows that that's how the game's meant to be played this new mode is for weirdos who have beaten all you can beat and they've maxed the damn game out and and their challenge is over but now hey hey what if you can never save you know what if you can you you bring the wrong tool well that's on you you're gonna have to figure it like it really does not, it's very unceremonious how they yeah. just shove you into it. And I, and I really like it for that. And also it makes me go, oh, I should just beat the campaign first. You know. Well, have you ever seen, have you ever done, because there are special missions on top of the regular missions that you can take that award even more money. But have you seen, if you pick time attack, how much time they give you to complete these missions? Like what they expect I mean, granted, they're not saying that this is like a baseline grade C time. They're they're saying this is A tier. Yeah. But like I picked time attack because I was like, I'm pretty fast at this game. If I want to, I could probably do this. They drop you at a random point in the map and they're like, you got two minutes. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. I didn't know that. That's funny. It, yeah. So there's bonus. There's bonus missions you can take. And usually I rarely take the timed ones because I've just found that all those timers are incredibly short. Sometimes they'll come up with ways for you to extend them. But more often than not, you just spawn and it's like, yeah, go kill him in two minutes with an ice pick. Don't be seen by anybody. Don't change your disguises and don't get caught by any security cameras. And you're like, I, you give me two minutes for this? It's clearly no. not. For the the mode the mode is a love letter. Me. The mode is a love letter to hardcore players of of Hitman. Like it, it's yeah. clear to me that's who they're aiming this for, and 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 by you know by natural succession, hopefully you're a player that gets to that point if you're out there and you're just like kind of a noob to it one day maybe you'll want to do this roguelike mode and then you'll realize oh my gosh this is really good but it's daunting as shit i still love it though like yeah. it, it probably sounds like i'm dogging on it a lot i love this mode i have not i wanted to play through the entire campaign again because i've played none of three and i've only played about half of two mm. so there's a lot of game there for me to still experience in hitman and i i love the game and i've seen some of those maps now because the the roguelike mode uses them um, and I'm just like, oh, some of these maps are so cool. What's happening in this map? Like, you know, there's like a, a small town USA where you're just in a neighborhood. And I was like, what's the story with this map? I got to try this. And I like this roguelike mode so much that I haven't I haven't touched the campaign, even though that was what I <laughs> it might help the you game with the roguelike do. mode. To, it yeah. would help me, Bo. It would help me a lot yeah. because when I do the maps that I've played in the campaign, I am so much better at them. Yeah, but uh, I I can't I can't stop playing this. Yeah, it's cool. And as a freebie that they just threw in, like it's better than that. You know what I mean? Like we're sitting here talking yeah. about bang for buck. This is a lot of bang for nothing bucks 
Unless you'd never oh, owned the game before, and then even then... Buying Hitman 3 and getting all the games and all this content is is a deal. It's if crazy. If you like this game, like, if you... This isn't going to sell you on it if you just hate the premise or, or hate the execution, but Hitman walks that perfect line. Um, you remember when games were trying to get in on the memes and they would just make games like I Am Bread, where yeah. it's like, here's a silly concept. It doesn't control well at all. And it's going to be funny because it doesn't control well. Hitman walks the perfect line of being just hard enough to control that you are going to F up frequently and it will be funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Without being infuriatingly hard to control. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I still have moments. I had one where it was, uh, I had a contract where I had to kill a woman while she was doing her tell because uh, for the last target in this chain, they don't just mark the target for you. You have to identify who the target is uh, from a couple suspects and they have tells and they have ways that you can figure out who it is. And so I was going to get bonus points if I killed her while she was doing one of her tells, which was smoking. So I was blending into a crowd. I had a knife ready and I was just waiting for her to, to start smoking. And just as she went to do it, I stepped out with the knife. And the only security guard on the block that could see through my disguise <laughs> stepped around the corner and looked at me and goes, who are you? <laughs> and I panicked and I threw the knife casually over her head. Now I don't have a way to kill her because it was the only weapon I had. Yeah. Then the security guard starts chasing me, so I start running and trying to hide in the crowd. I had to go back in to pick up my knife, which was considered trespassing. So the race car driver goes, what are you doing here, sir? Oh, and I man, pick up a knife level. in front of him and he goes, what do you have that for? I put it away real quick, turn around and go back, wait for her to come back, throw a knife at her head, and then, you know split out of there amazing it is so fun yeah. uh and knowing you can't can save your wrong. save scum yourself through that problem is super intense yeah you know like is it there in there's it, i'm not even saying it's not a, i'm not saying it's not a valid way to play hitman but in the campaign to be able to go quick save okay now let's see what we do oh i failed at that let me try that again from a different angle yeah that's a fun thing Doing it this way is just a different kind of fun, <laughs> but it's really high stakes. It's just, and then you lose all your shit. It's hard. It's good though. Yeah. But it's hard. I mean, cause sometimes it feels unfair. Like I did, I really did. It wasn't just a joke. I, I was setting up the perfect kill room. Like I was playing like Dexter. I was like, all right, my target walks through here. Mm -hmm. I have to inject them with something and I have to kill them with an ax. I have an ax. I, I can inject them. I have a room where nobody comes through except them. I just have to clear this. I just have to clear, or no, I needed to poison them. Mm. And they there was food that they ate from, and I had the poison. But there was two maids chatting in front of the food. And I was like, can I slip <laughs> this in without them noticing? Yeah. And I was like... There's no save, but I have to do this. And I didn't know what else to do, so I just hit the button. And they immediately go, what'd you put in that food? And they immediately <laughs> go and alert the guards. And I was like, shit. Yeah. I spent so much time setting up this perfect kill just to, just to immediately be caught by these maids and then, you know, get shot to death moments later and then be told what a failure I am. When oh, I 47, here you are in the hospital again. You're such an idiot. She's so, she, she just, she <laughs> haunts me. Why did you the food right in front of the maids? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and they're using the same lady they've used the, for all these three games and she's great. It's so, uh, it's a hell of a package. And when it was on sale for like 30 bucks for the whole trip, triple experience all in one with this new mode, stupid value amazing yeah if you like stealth games if you don't like them no, it's three games for the price of one plus lots of actual good extras right exactly yeah. and but and decent wacky but decent vr implementation it's a little weird i'm looking forward to getting back to it one of these days i would want to play i might need to play flat screen just to familiarize myself with the control so it's a little <laughs> easier when i go back to vr but yeah yeah you did that thing though where you got a room full of guards Except you were throwing them off the roof or something. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I, yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah, I, I just shot the target, but then I alerted a guard. It took me. It's just, it's hard to get. In. I like to play seated, and not all games have those comfort options. Yeah. So when when you they put your inventory in your 
sort of belt because they want you to go into your belt, but yeah. you're seated. Yeah. You can't put your arm low enough, so you got to really dig into your crotch to pull things out. <laughs> like, you know, like it's in that area because you're seated. Yeah. And then I just kept pull. I pulled out the wrong item, and it just it was too slow to kill anyone. And then <laughs> one at a time, yeah. I killed 18 people. And then I just died, and it sucked when I went upstairs. Because <laughs> oh, I think I was wearing the wrong outfit. Because I have lots to learn about the mechanics. Like, I was wearing... Yeah. It's in that um, super skyscraper. So, like, I had the the white militia security guard outfit, but then as I got upstairs, there were like dudes in berets with the darker th- and they're like, you know, clearly I don't know the like, even it's shocking to hear what John said about, they actually responded to the fact, like, what did you put in that food? Like, I don't know what the rules are. Cause most stealth games are like Metal Gear Solid. Do I see you or don't I see you? And if I see you, I attack. And then there's a forgiveness timer to get back to stealth. This game's like, no, if you get spotted, they know you're around. <laughs> you know, that guy remembers yeah. you're around. It's like, oh, that's very different. It's very well, unique. it's also layers deep because if I had been dressed like a waiter, I could mess with that food without reaction. Right. right. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's a little fuzzy on the logic at times. Like, you, it's something I don't really like save scumming because I think the chaos is some of the fun of it. But it is that moment, like, you do find yourself in a lot of situations where you go, what's going to happen if I do this? And that's where the saves coming is yeah, nice for exactly. you. Man, yeah, you can experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah that, what, it's like, what if I crush this guy under a car? Are people going to find that weird? Or yeah. Yeah. You're just saving yourself time and you're not coming, selling an eSport or something. Or, you know, no, that's true. To prove. It's, it's how you learn the mechanics. So What's funny is uh, do you when you change clothes, John just talked about being the waiter or not, you leave a little bag with the clothes in it on the ground. And the map tracks it now, so if you ever need to get back to it, you can do it. No one sees this but you. Yeah, no one cares. That's so weird to me. They'll see me walk funny over to a drink, but they won't see these three bags in the corner that are like, you know, wherever Larry the guard went, well, those are his clothes, but they don't see him. It's just, to me, that's strange. They do find guns, though. Like, that's always fun when they see a gun just sitting on the ground. They go, oh, no, a kid could find this. They go over and pick it up and walk it I also like what money grubbers they are. Every one of them, if you throw a coin, is always like, oh, my lucky day. And it's like, really? You needed the 50-cent piece or whatever it is? Like, how you doing there, buddy? You need more money. Anyway, that game's great. I'm glad you played it. And I love talking about Hitman. Uh, Bo. Boy, I have a bit of a list today. Let's get into it. I can't wait to hear what you think of Stacklands because I really. So, um, yeah, I was just in the mood for something a little more indie, casual. I don't know what it was. Saw Stacklands on Steam. Don't know what possessed me to buy it, except, yeah, I don't even know. It was my rave review. It was my rave review months ago. I I think this. Yeah, I I remembered that you did it. I bought it on the strength of your recommendation for sure. But I picked up a couple games, but I only ended up playing one, like a couple of cheap sale games, Mm -hmm. five bucks. Yeah, this game is awesome. It's really good. I think like you know, it's not going to be a, a play a ton of hours, but for five dollars, I'm probably going to get twenty hours out of it. And um, you know, I'm always like, I'm looking at ideas. This is a game that's definitely in the, you know, it probably wasn't that hard to make. You know, like just as an inspiration. No, mm-hmm. seriously, like you know, you get a three D plane, you make some cards. The art's very straightforward. And you basically have a checklist of things to do. And it's a survival game. Like Valheim or any other game, but it's just played with cards. And I thought it was like unique and innovative. And I think a lot of people have. I agree. So it's like it's kind of like just game dev inspiration in a way. Like just like, oh, look at this cool thing that is like works really well and is fun. And I haven't played I can't like I've stayed up way too late playing it because I'm like, I just just one more quest to complete. To give so people main... an idea of like a mechanic, for example, if you have a stone card, you can lay a villager card on top of it. It will literally literally mine the stone from the card. It's basically solitaire, except it's not play it's not the traditional solitaire where you have, you know, ranks and suits and all that. It's like it's just you stack cards in a fun way like you would Magic the Gathering, you know, your lands. Like it lets you stack the cards that way. Let's you open packs and get stuff. You have little villagers, and one of the fun things is the enemies. They don't like they can damage your villagers, but mostly they're just irritating because they bounce your cards around. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bunny. You're showing a bunny right now, and if you leave that bunny around, he's not really an enemy. 
he'll knock you'll, you'll place everything where you want it and then they'll knock all your stuff around you're like damn animals stop knocking my cards around mm-hmm. it's a really unique um card game and i just thought oh like i look at it and i think oh what what other you know it's a placemat there's a place to pick up cards like what other things could you do with a format like this you know mm-hmm. like it, and and also i just haven't been able to stop playing it i can't wait till i'm finished so i can move on to other things in my life mm-hmm. um it's fun yeah it's i mean it's a it's a fun builder game worth every penny really, of five dollars really neat five bucks and it's only and this is another today it's all been overwhelmingly positive reviewed games today i feel like except for uh atomic heart yeah. this game people love this game yeah it's I, great five bucks it. you get 20 hours out of it it's it hits a sweet spot and it's like it's an innovative solitaire survival game I just I don't have a com- single complaint. Even the low key art style is still nice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah, I love how stuff. it looks for, uh, for mm-hmm. how simple it is. I think it looks. I really think that's slick. to its credit. I don't think. I mean, not that you couldn't do more fancy cards, but it, I think it adds to the fun to have it be the simple yeah. iconic stuff. I think it's better that yeah. way. Yeah, I just and and I find too. I'm just I'm a little like I enjoy playing it, and I'm inspired by it. Where I'm just like, oh, you know, like. I don't know, just from a game dev perspective. Yeah. I'm like, it looks nice, but also it's very simple. Like, it's achievable. Yeah. And by the sure, way, that rabbit that, that rabbit shits out a shit card, a poop card. And you have yeah. to throw it out, yeah. sell it. Yeah. yeah. The worst are corpses, because you can't sell corpses. Yeah. But for some reason, if you have two corpses, you can mash them together, and then they poof and disappear. I don't understand that, but it's oh, convenient. That is weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. Um, just, I, I got ravaged. They found the crab king Mm -hmm. if you kill too many crabs on the island i don't know if you know this but there's another zone no Um, i didn't know that i didn't get that far yeah you gotta keep going there's an island zone and there's crabs on it you kill it for crab meat but if you kill too many crabs you piss off the crab king (laughs) and the crab king is like 100 hp and just like you decimated my island yeah um yeah so you gotta be you know there's some just it's it it, it, there's kind of some challenging moments where you're like i didn't know that was gonna happen Uh uh-oh pirate ships there's also pirate ships with huge crews of pirates but you can turn pirates to your side if you have a parrot of course oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> parrots make pirates happy and then you get a friendly pirate who helps you <laughs> of instead course. of fights you it's great <laughs> anyways the game is full of adorable little interactions like this perfect like it's beautiful my child is beautiful in every way mm. so nice yeah. recommend it highly glad to hear it um uh, let's see. All right. Now we're going to take a, a left turn into Bo's speciality, the VR quarter. Mm. Um, so I got some links. To, I actually streamed some last night, some gameplay of some of the stuff I did. Um, one game I bought a while ago that I finally got around to playing is a boomer shooter in VR called Compound. Uh, you'll also see, I think it was ranked overwhelmingly positive when I bought it. I don't know if it still is, but it's a pixel art. I think Doom, like original Doom style, except it's in VR. And what are the, what is the benefit of this game? It looks a little kitty, looks a little baby, I don't know, you know, low. The art, you know, there's recycle bins, it's an office, it's nothing like incredible, but the colors are vibrant. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guns handle really well. It's one of the best gun handling VR games. Like, so you pre- press a button and pop out the ammo and then you have to manually reload it in, snap it back. It's a boomer shooter, so it's light and easy to play. The best part, see how I'm dual wielding? You can dual wield weapons. When you need to pick something up and you drop the gun, it doesn't drop to the floor. It just floats in the air. Oh, that's cool. It's a game changer because everyone's trying to be realistic. Oh, you, you drop something. If you don't put it in your pocket, it falls to the ground. This game's like, yeah, just hang the gun in the air if you need your hand. And I'm like, whoa. It, like, it, it just makes it cool. And then so it's like Matrix style. You do some moves, then you can pick the gun back up. And the guns are very expressive. You see here, I'm using a grenade launcher. There, I got to get the ammo out, leave that gun in the air, put mm-hmm. the shell in, yep. and fire another one. Yep. And then I got like a submachine gun on the other hand. Um, game is, it's fun. And it's not expensive. I think it's in the $20 range. Um, and I got kind of addicted and looking forward to playing it again. So, uh, yeah. I, I, like recommend how this, I like how this looks. Let me ask you this. Uh when you call it a boomer shooter, I don't know what that, what does that actually mean when you say that? Boomer shooter, like shooters, because when... So boomers are old people to yeah. the people. Oh, okay. So it, it's the type of shooter we in, like there's a resurgence of doom like low low or quake likes. You know what I mean? Like yeah, there's but a wouldn't lot those of them be, on, those would be Gen X shooter. I don't know a boomer who played Doom is they, what I'm getting at. The, the, if you get mad at it, the funnier it is. Just don't fight it. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> like, look right. at the boomer getting mad at him. I'm not a boomer. Uh, yeah. uh, All right, I'm in. He cries in boomer. You know, just, just, <laughs> just, just. <laughs> Just, just lean in, it. lean into that thing, and let it take. I get it. Right. Let it take hold. It, it rhymes too, which increases. It, it's like rhyming overrides truth. If something is true, but the rhyme is really good, but it's not as true, the rhyme tends to win out as well. So. Oh, these grenades look fun. Yeah. The, oh, the, and it's again, it hits you way better in BR. The bullets shoot at you slow, so you can actually strafe and dodge them. Yeah. And like in 3D space, it feels like something's fl- some weird pixel uh, pellet is flying at your head. It's really good. It's like overwhelmingly positive for a reason. I know it looks like uh, just some. It looks like a not good version of Doom. Like when you when you watch it on a flat screen, you're like, I don't know about this game. Like it doesn't look very, you know. And the, I would level that as a criticism. I wish the enemies looked a little cooler than they do. Mm. It's very, you know. But um, game yeah, plays where it's at. They, I hope they make another one and maybe make it better next time. Like this is a pretty good uh, game, and it's roguelike. So it's it's again, you just start from scratch, level one. You go through this office compound. And shoot robots, and oh, there's a, a Roomba. You blow them up. Blow the Roombas they're, they're up. Hostile, yeah. but there's there's interactables in the main menu select screen. There's a fridge, and you can get the drinks out and eat the hamburgers in the fridge and stuff. That's all, always a lot of fun. <laughs> Chat says it looks like <laughs> Bo made this game in a weekend. <laughs> yep, I, I would definitely, I would definitely put it in like the graphics are not stellar, but yeah. um, you. Uh, this is a do not judge by the appearance. I think uh, the, it's like probably on purpose, provided. right? It feels like it's on purpose to me. Like they're they aimed for. So this the aesthetic. lower res your game is, the easier it is to achieve your ninety to one hundred twenty frames per second in VR, which yeah. makes for just a better feeling experience. But yeah. it's not really sexy. Um, but uh, apart from that, like I just think the 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 art behind like the way the dudes look. And even the melee could they could still do better with the materials they're given. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not gonna give them points for like amazing art and melee, but it's one of the best feeling shooters to play that is just open up the game and start shooting. You know what I mean? Like just um no big story, no we're trying to be VR. Why don't you try s- scratching your head in VR? It's like real life, whoa. It's just like here's guns, shoot, have fun. Mm-hmm. And the guns I think are a, they're the best implementation of guns, short of Half Life Alex, which wow. is the gold standard. That's high. But that's high me, praise. Yeah, yeah. No, the, 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 it's playing with the guns is the best part of the game. All right, You've, I oh, yeah. think you may have sold this. Is a big recommend. This. I really like it. I kind of can't wait to play again. You playing this um, on Steam through your headset? Obviously, Steam, yeah. Okay. So I. I um, so I'm on the Oculus, so I'll log in, air link it up to the Oculus, then I'll start Steam VR, then I'll play from Steam. Okay. okay. That's how I got to do it on the Oculus. It might even be at this point available straight on the Oculus yeah, store. It when be. I bought it, it was only on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't see a reason. The only reason I buy things on Steam is so I can stream them. Right. Like if, if I have the choice between the two, I still kind of like it's it's, it's the easiest to stream from Steam. Oh, that's a hard sentence to say. I find easiest so. to stream from. St- oh, geez, it is. Yeah, well, not stream for not for John. Steam. He'd probably whip it out in two seconds and have no problem. No, saying he was it. whipping it out on Twitter today. I yeah, saw. Yeah, he was. Yep, that's all I do. John's account whipping see, it yeah, out. The, the gun. Yeah, the aim's great. Good the, gun variety. The, uh, this the tact- tactile nature of reloading guns is a big sell point for me. I like that a yeah. lot. So you put the bullet in, press A, and boom, it's back in. There's also a super shotgun like Doom style where it's you put both bullets in, mm. and then That's cool. whip it up and did a ding. Definitely you reload. I was reloading slow at first, but as I got used to it, I got into fast reloads. This game looks great. I think yeah. I'm getting All right, it. Uh, let's move on. We got a, got a lot of ground to cover. Um, next up is a flat screen game that I want to highlight for a specific reason. To all the game devs out there, or the people supplying the money and budget for games, I should say, not so much the devs, uh, is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Oh, yeah. A kind listener that I meant to look up who bought it for me, but someone bought it for me. <laughs> I wish it was easy to look up who bought this for me. Um, a kind and gentle listener, um, random purchase out of the blue said, this game is a VR game and a really great experience. I want you to play it. And I said... They made a VR game, but no. Hellblade just released a VR version of their game. Now, I don't know if you guys know this game is. It's the Ninja Theory game about... Oh, oh yeah. I think she's like... 
like Irish or Celtic or something. She's not a Viking, but, but it's Landic, right? She's fighting. She's fighting Vikings, but everyone's got an Irish accent. Oh, they're Irish. Oh, I thought they were like, Icelandic. Go and maybe kill all. It's like I think there's like a, I don't know the full story yet, but I think it's like Vikings are buttholes, and you go and kill the Vikings, and you're not a Viking. You're like you're like get the hell out of our stop making Viking TV shows, you bastards! I'm yeah. sick of it. And yeah, I'm sick of it. You go on Iceland. Isn't it her? Isn't this whole thing like it's a big allegory for like mental illness and stuff like that too? Like that's so it's yeah. So fame. the big theme. So if you haven't played it. The big theme is that the protagonist um, has psychosis. Yeah. Um, so the whole game, you, even in flat screen, you're meant to play it with headphones mm -hmm. because you hear voices. It's literally their voices talking to you, saying random shit, making fun of you, supporting you. Um, it's supposed to, and they even advertise like they have um, mental health consultants participate in the creation of the game because they are actually trying to depict the mental health issue. Mm -hmm. And in VR, it's crazy. Yeah. The one thing I will say, this isn't a first-person experience. It's not even a designed for VR experience. It's the flat screen game, but they just offered VR support. You know, instead oh. of letting modders do it and then issuing takedowns, they like beautiful people. Just it's the same game purchase. It's just like, oh, you're you know, are you displaying it? on your screen or on a VR headset. Well, here you can play it in VR. And, you know, they've earned their money doing some modifications to it to make it playable. Like there's, you know, they, they, they didn't do nothing. It's not just a display thing. They did some optimizations. But as you can see, I'm playing here in third person. It's a cutscene right now. But I'm playing, I'm sitting and using mouse and keyboard actually and just playing like I'd be playing except I see the game in 3D. Gotcha. And it's a it's it's crazy being in that like fire room. That's um, Suter, I think, or something like that. Uh, fighting this guy is crazy. Uh, the game's pretty fun too. It's very, um, I would say, it's closest. It feels like playing a From Software game mm -hmm. in that your moves are kind of um, they're deliberate. So you got to parry or block, and and you got to use your ability and move around. Um, you know, like, so if you swing your sword and it's a mistake, well, you're committed and you, you make that thing. So there's, like, hit windows and stuff like that. Um, but very slow to get into. I didn't fight anything for the first 30, 40 minutes. Oh, man. Um, yeah, and you see all those little symbols floating around in 3D. They're in 3D space. It looks wild. Like, it's, it's, it's a really sensory experience that I really think is phenomenal in, um, in, in, in the VR space. So I want to thank that person for purchasing it. And um, want to tell people making games, like, you don't have to make it first person. I don't even need touch control options. Just render it in stereoscopic so I can play your game experiences in 3D. Like, I would appreciate that. That would be awesome. Uh, I was right about the, sorry, the setting is, ice, there, she's Icelandic. and they Oh, it's Iceland? Oh, yeah, but they have, they have, um. They didn't like those uh, guys. They, I swear they're Irish voice actors, at least. Oh, like, they might be, yeah, yeah. Like there's a a guy I don't like he talks to you. It's actually funny. It's um film like you you know it's not uh, 3D animation. They got an actor to to film, and you know we see that in games all the time. Where like you know even in Atomic Heart, I saw there was a, a section where they filmed the real person and put him on a TV screen. Oh right, yeah. But the way they did the processing on it, like the guy they got and the way they did the shadows, it's the best like Who Framed Roger Rabbit style <laughs> game and flat. Uh, that I've seen, and he's not in it much, but when he appears, uh, it's just like, oh, that's a real actor. Like, he looked like a 3D thing, but I'm like, his mouth animates so well. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, that's a real guy. Um, it's one of the best implementations of, of that mixture I've, I've ever seen in a game. This so. one's got a sequel coming probably next year. It's It was announced in 2019. They don't oh, have it's an not. Exact the sequel's date. not out yet? Yeah, not out yet yet. But that will be a Game Pass game as well. Um, obviously, it won't affect VR. Issues, oh, I didn't but... realize. I thought it. I thought it was out already. Oh well. I'm, let me tell you, uh, this game is money, especially on a VR headset. But it's just a regular ass video game experience. Which, like I said, I like the sitting down games. This is, uh, you can and you sail through these areas of corpses hanging off of trees and stuff. It's so far, I like it. Yeah, I, I I've been meaning to play this forever. I was always just worried about how dour the setting is because I think it was Patrick. Super Kutana. dour, yeah. mega. Like, it is full of trauma. Like every cutscene is like her falling over in pain, screaming, and while the voices say, "You're stupid. No, you should go forward." Like it's it's yes, 
It's dour. It makes Disco Elysium feel kind of joyous. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's no humor. I've played two, an hour to two hours. There has been no jokes, no humor, no happiness. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. It is tra- wall-to-wall trauma. Hmm. Wow. Anyways, great in VR, though. All right. Um, all I'm right. In. So I got to run through some shorter stuff, though, for my games played. Sure. Nope. No Man's Sky released a VR update. That's what got me playing VR. Um, is it cool? It's great in VR. The one thing I will say is play in flat screen first and get your inventory shit sh- sorted out. Because <laughs> when they update things, they uninstall your mods. And I got to tell you, I like everything about playing in No Man's Sky VR, except for and what I'm doing here, inventory management. Mm. Like trying to hold up my hands and aim to move the cards around. I'm like, this sucks. Never their strongest point, it even sucks. in 2D. This was not their strongest point. Inventory <laughs> Someone management recommended sucks. playing mouse and keyboard to do the inventory management, even in VR, which I didn't consider as a possibility. So, you know, maybe that's an adjustment I can make. Yeah. But if you're PS2 VR, you can't really do that. That sucks. Uh, one thing I will say, though, is all the planets I was on, apparently uh, there are new life forms on it, and giant worms jumped out of the ground and those look amazing uh i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it here if it's not a little bit later but like a giant um when when giant worms shoot out of the ground and fly over you it's it's something else it's yeah. like holy shit i feel, I feel <laughs> like john didn't we a couple updates ago john had some pretty cool was it i don't know if you had video but you described this too like big sandworms right yeah, like big i worms. had i had a crazy planet there were there were giant worms there were things that just tore out of the earth and tried to grab both me and my ship like there's some oh, crazy shit. planet stuff uh in the in the game right now I, I will say, like, if I get back to flat screen, see how I'm trying to, like, install? Oh, oh there the it is. Worm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. It flies. Like, it's just jumping over my ship. There's, like, stuff everywhere in VR. You're just like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, it's quite the experience. That was the third one I'd seen. The first, uh, yeah. Anyways. Um, the the game, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fun experience, but I, I have to relearn stuff. And I don't think, unless I was starting from scratch in VR, like a new save file. Yeah. I don't think I want to be messing around too much. Uh, see, I'm trying to reinstall all my mods. Anyways, just want to say that. Uh, all right. It's cool, the though. I, keeps, they I'm revamped the whole awesome. VR part of the game, right? Like That's all a new... Uh, yeah, they updated it for PS2 VR. So I'm, I've am i missed a lot of updates, so I'm not clear what was updated on what. Mm, but mm. from the last time I did it, I liked it. A, like It felt smoother and better experience. I did some dog fighting. It was great. Now, the game um, that I've got the most interest in this week is so stupid that I even care, but tell me about Mighty Doom. Is Mighty good? Doom. Mobile. It's mobile time. Switching Whee! from VR. We'll go to another of John's favorite categories, mobile games. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Doom. I'm a big Doom fan, as you guys are all aware. I talk about and lavish that game with praise. I was excited to see a mobile game for Doom. Mm-hmm. It's a Doom game. I'm going to check it out. Right. Um, we unfortunately have ourselves a bit of a Diablo Immortal situation here. Uh, 10 on 10 game, zero out of 10 microtransaction store. <laughs> Shit. Uh, you can mine with Vega. You can watch an ad to boost it. It gives you a notification and annoys you. You only have 20 energy. So, and it's five energy to play a mission, run out of energy, no mission to play. Oh, I love when oh. games are like, no, you're too yeah. poor to play this game. Hate thing it. thing is, I don't want to give it the free advertising, um, but the, on the off chance, some like one of these episodes reaches somebody who can make some freaking positive change in the world, stop ruining games with this microtransaction shit. Like this game actually, like, I would pay $20 to play what is essentially a survivor's clone. It takes a lot of the ideas. You don't got to press the shoot button, but it doesn't fill up the screen with enemies. Like the yeah, you're just moving forward, survivors. right? You move it's forward. It's a different thing, it, but yeah. the arena is there. They've replicated all the doom mechanics, like glory kills. You and the only buttons you can press is for an ultimate, which you charge up. It takes a while, and then you have a secondary weapon, like a rocket launcher, with like a 10 second cooldown. So, and ro- in a true roguelike style, you could you get modifications to all your guns. And, you know, I like getting, it's not really a Doom thing, but you might get new gloves, boots, equipment, even leveling it up. It's like, I'm okay with, you start putting money behind it uh, to, to speed things up. Your game is, uh, you're, you're, you're messing up. 
Hmm. And it has all the sound effects and sick music from the game. So that's that's a big part of the enjoyment of it is everything sounds good. Mm-hmm. It's the, you know, Mick Gordon music. I'm still playing it, but I'm really, I, I think I need to uninstall it. The worst sin this thing does is you can buy cosmetics. For what purpose? It's single player. <laughs> like, who am I even going to show it off to? At least in Marvel Snap, you know, I got um, a Ghost Rider variant of Quinjet. And I get a lot of compliments on that card. <laughs> wow. Like, it looks badass. It's dinky Quinjet, but um, I will get emotes on the card. Like, you know, you can click a card and do stars in the eyes. Like, wow. Yeah. That card, I think I've gotten 100 kudos on it. I'm like, okay, I can see buying a card and showing off to the other people online. Yeah, you, know, you got but... a rare variant in that game. I don't play Marvel Snap anymore, but... Uh, I remember playing it, and somebody had a Todd McFarlane symbiote Spider-Man. Ooh. And I was like, oh my god. I felt like I met a celebrity. I was like, who, yeah. who are you? Like, <laughs> and that's, I think that's what you want to achieve <laughs> in a multiplayer environment, right? Like, you want yeah. someone to look at your card and go, <laughs> you know, you want it to be that scene in American Psycho it... where they're comparing business cards and freaking out about it. It provides value to your purchase. Yeah. If, you know, like, just like in real life, sick jersey, bro. I know, right? Like, yeah, go senators. You know, and it's like, if if I just buy a thousand dollar prestige jersey and wear it to bed, you know, like what's the point? <laughs> like just buy a Walmart shirt and go to bed in it, you know. Like obviously, <laughs> you buy flashy clothes so that you wear them out and they are of note. Otherwise, <laughs> buy a Walmart mom? shirt and go to bed is my favorite thing I've heard tonight. <laughs> well, you know what Scott, I mean. Did you I know just I love download it. this game. Yeah, I just did. Um, yeah, yeah. And I just knew exactly what he was doing. I'm like, Scott is looking down. Good. He's Good either wallet. being in a bottle or downloading the Doom game that He'll both be fine. just said <laughs> don't play. But you're, also, well, yeah, but Scott's immune to stores. Like, I have an addictive personality. Like, I never Snap, buy I'm, I gotta un- uninstall Snap too. Like, sometimes I'm like, you know, the borders, not all of my cards have the shiny borders. I could spend $139 and get more shiny borders. I'm like, why do I want that? Yeah. Why? That, you know, that like, was, it was that kind of thought process that why you know, do led I me want down that? the uninstalling path. I also... Doom is a bit easier because I really ask, why do I want that? It's not even multiplayer. It's the stupidest. It is the stupidest thing in the world. Um, but you know what? This new Tomb Raider game's like this, by the way. Um, there's a new Tomb oh, Raider really? mobile game that is almost a, the same idea. It's like Lara Croft, you go into a room, do a bunch of Vampire Survivor style gameplay, sort of move around, yeah. and your weapons do the rest, and then you know go back and upgrade and blah blah whatever. But again, also just full chock full of the ceiling, full of microtransactions and stupid auto attack. And- auto attack on the main weapon is a real trend that Vampire Survivor started. Yeah, basically everyone there's a, I think there's probably an age market where people have carpal um, that don't want to press attack, 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 attack. They just want to do the big buttons, if yeah. any. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that we're really tapping into, uh, yeah, we're really tapping into this this new trend in gaming. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. No maybe they'll give attack. us if they do that it's in so consoles or PC the games. It's going. It's kind of yeah, gross, but maybe there's something to it. I don't know. Give me something else to do with other no, buttons. There is something to the gameplay. It's gross the way that they're designing it. Like you'll this see. This feels like this feels like being a talented author. I, or I, this is what I feel like working on this game is like. It's like being a talented author and being hired to write like the descriptions of McDonald's menu items. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? I'm sorry. That's a very good. That's the best example I've heard. That's exactly it. Yeah, you are. You Stephen are. King. Well, Stephen King, we're gonna hire you. We'll pay you anything you want. Now, write how a Big Mac tastes. Yeah, yeah, or, but know. not in the style of Stephen King. In the style of corporate McDonald's. Yeah, speak. exactly. Working with us. We're so proud to have you here. That's yeah. perfect. That's exactly what it is, and it definitely feels that way. All right. Well, you anyway, you played uh, Nintendo Switch a little. How'd Mario yeah, Kart eight go? I popped over to Mike's house, and I played with him and his young lad. And um, I haven't played Mario Kart 
Mario, Mario, I heard no, you talking you shit it. about you me on it. TMS. <laughs> pasta. <laughs> it's time to time. Pasta. It's pasta. 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 Whatever. No, see, Mario. Sorry, we can call it Mario if you want. Doesn't matter. Mario. But Mario, Mario Kart is, uh, boy, what a long tail this eight has. It they it came out on the Wii U. It got remastered or you know put out on the Switch later, and is still getting content and DLC and everything. I think it's one of the greatest games ever made. But I'm curious what. Yeah, I, I mean, there were so many tracks. There were different cars to pick. Um, I, I played in the clown car because I thought it was awesome, but it was terrible. And Mike's <laughs> young lad was kind of making fun of me. He's so good. He's so young and so good at the game. I was like, that's incredible. Yeah. Just because you, you for, I'm, I'm not around kids too much. So I like, you, it's like, oh, sh-, you know, it's hard for me to learn. I was like, I'm bad. And I was even telling them, you know, remember at Nerdtacular, we played Mario Kart. People were like, this guy's good at Heroes. He's great at games. And I like stunk it up so Oh, bad that's right. Mario we Kart. played it on the big I'm like, screen. I'm not good yeah. at Mario Kart. <laughs> like, it's not my game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, after we did a few cups and it got better. But I was just really impressed, to, like, with because, uh, again, the last one I probably played might have been once or twice on, like, GameCube, I want to say. Yeah, Double Dash. But really, the SNES version is the one I remember. And yeah. I was just like, damn, this game's really come a long way. Um, it's so. great. It's such a... I mean, there's a reason why it's the number one selling Nintendo game for I don't know how many years running now. It's, it's just... It's really good. Yeah, and it's just, it's just surprising that the... You know, he loves it. He plays Mario Kart every chance he gets. And I remember those days when just having a Nintendo was awesome and it's all you needed games yeah. resonated like really hard. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm jealous that you got to play. I just wanted to mention it. Cause you know, I usually don't play too many Nintendo games and no, I'm look at you. thumbs up. It's a, it's a great little purchase switch there. monster lately. All right. Speaking of switch and we're going to switch to a break real quick. When we come back, we're going to do a dear Martha and a couple other news stories. We also got some phone calls today. Lots of fun stuff. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, we're back to... Let's make sure this is recording. Yep, we're good. Uh, All right. I say mil- milk, not milk. Milk? Yeah, some people say milk. I say milk, I think. I don't say I, crick. I say bagel, weird. Beg- oh, Be- bagel. Oh, bagel. Yeah, oh, you're say, Britta. I say bagel. I say bagel. <laughs> Yeah, this, I, say, I, I, I kind of pronounce it as if it was spelled with an E. This, bagel. This bagel. Bagel. Business. Bagel. Very weird. I'd like a bagel yeah. with creme, bagel. creme cheese. Yeah, I don't emphasize the A in <laughs> bagel enough yeah. for people. Bagel. It's Mario. other people's problem. It's not mine. They it's don't not... <laughs> hear it the way I intended. <laughs> it was never yours. All right. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We're going to dive right into a Dear Martha. That's right. We're going to review an ancient ass video game magazine, and we're going to do it in the style of Ken Burns documentaries, like we always do. And uh, John, of course, has prepared one. Uh, John, anything special here before we hit go? Nope. Not even that many screenshots for you to, to deal with this time. So you oh. easy peasy today. Thank you for the reminder. Hold on a second. I forgot to pull those down. <laughs> there they are. All right. Let me Ooh. pull those down real fast. We got that one. Oh, it's just the two. Yeah. Oh, easy. I can do oh, that. What a All right, here we go. Enjoy. My dearest Martha, today we look at Game On USA, the American attempt to publish one of Japan's longest running video game magazines. This issue is the first issue from May of 1996. This magazine touts itself as the magazine of electronic manga gaming. And I actually don't know what that means. But I do think the key word here is manga. Remember it. It will be important later. When I look at this cover, I see Cammy from Street Fighter. Then I remember I was reviewing the magazine and should take in what else is on the cover. So upon a second look, I saw Cammy from Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. A more focused third look, though, revealed... You guessed it, Cammy from Street Fighter. Eventually, however, I did notice a cover that, yes, had Cammy from Street Fighter on it, but also offered a lot of other features I might look forward to in this magazine. Firstly, a letter from the editor telling me that this magazine isn't like the others. He's right. He promises that I won't be exposed to page after page of ads which is an interesting promise considering the ad on the page prior and the ads, plural, on the page following, 
but let's dive in and see if we can spot where this magazine really differs from others that I've covered. We start with a story about the history of Street Fighter, and right away we're already confusing Americans by trying to teach them that Balrog is actually M. Bison, M. Bison is actually Vega, and Vega is actually Balrog. Personally, I'm just happy some other corner of gaming understands my pain when I have to discuss early Final Fantasy games. <laughs> it's good though. I read. And I learned. The next section is a few pages on gaming, com games coming to the US from Japan. And while I'm no historian, I think all these did in fact happen, or in cases where they didn't, the magazine said there weren't currently any plans. You know what? 10 out of 10. We're off to a great start. By page 14, we're learning about manga, and while that may seem silly to try and teach us these days, this was a time when we still called anime Japanimation oh. for some reason. <laughs> oh. So getting some knowledge was probably worthwhile, but what do we do with this knowledge of manga? Is there a place we can utilize this newfound appreciation for storytelling? But what if I told you on page 17, this video game magazine becomes a manga magazine? Don't believe me? How many pages of manga would it have to be to convince you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the magazine itself is only 82 pages long. How many pages of those 82 do you think they decided to dedicate to manga? 80. If you guessed... 27 pages of nothing but translated Japanese manga in the middle of this video game magazine? Well, you wouldn't even be half by correct because it was 56 pages of manga in this magazine. That's right, most of this first issue is a comic about Kami from Street Fighter and a second comic about Samurai Showdown. By the time you finish the comics, they only have enough pages left for an ad, ironically, two pages of previews, an article about who's better, Ryu or Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury, more ads, a contest requesting letters for future issues, and then more ads. That's it. That's the whole comic uh, magazine. It's kind of crazy. Like, 70% of this magazine is a comic. And what magazine is here isn't really anything impressive. Sadly for Game On USA, people generally agreed. This magazine only ran for seven issues here. Speaking of how short-lived this magazine was, remember when I mentioned there was a contest for writing letters to the magazine? Do you know what the prize was for winning? Mm. A 12-issue subscription to Game On USA. <laughs> Considering they only made it to number seven, those folks are going to be waiting a long, long time wow. for the prize. <laughs> That's all for this one, Martha. While the magazine was hardly ad-free, nothing stood out, so here's another picture of Cammy, I guess. Yours in time, <laughs> S. Beckett 96. <laughs> Is it always S. Beckett and then the year that you did yeah. the mag? Oh, that's great. I didn't notice that until today. I'm smart. <laughs> I'm a smart guy. I'm really with it. Uh, fantastic as always. Well done. Now this. <laughs> It's time for the news we didn't cover earlier. Some quick mentions, all right? We got a few here. For example, Mike Ybarra, Blizzard Entertainment's dude, the guy in charge of everything just below uh, Activision, the go-to guy. Uh, up till now, seemed like he was uh, there for the little guy, there helping push for the, the needs of the, of the embattled company known as Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, he brought more bad news to them in an all-hands-on meeting that got real weird and basically said hey you're going to have less uh, profit sharing you're going to have less bonuses at the end of the year and um you're all lucky to have it basically is what he said and <laughs> if roll. you think if you think us executives are making more money than you you're living in a dream world. yeah that guy's uh, worth something to that effect which probably doesn't come out the way you think it, it also is 100 percent untrue and he alone is worth about 10 million he gets paid bank compared to anyone working at Blizzard on any of the levels. I don't know. You know, maybe Ian Hazakostas has a sweet ride. I don't know. But come on, man. It's not the kind of thing you want to say. Yeah. It, you know, that's obviously the way things work. Yeah. But yeah, just, yeah, I don't, that, that's not going to win you any uh, fans saying, uh, you know, uh, we're all struggling. Tough it out. 
Yeah, basically that's what he said. And I, when, I when truly an offer for billions of dollars for the company, unprecedented being blocked by, you know, it's just. Well, not only that, they had their highest profits ever, a record quarter last quarter. It doesn't make it. It absolutely doesn't make sense unless you're 100 percent about the numbers and you need every year to look like growth. And we've talked about this a million times on the yeah. show, and that's how you do it: is you, I, you cut people, you cut pay, you cut all that and then the next oh, year suddenly sense. you're i think um the big thing i keep hearing about on the social medias is the return to work hmm. which uh you know is not a big people are not a big fan of the return to work and um fair enough yeah but uh you know how we got to from everyone's got to come back to work to uh, everyone's struggling to make ends meet. Like, you know, I, I don't, I don't know why that came up. If that was your objective, yeah, um, I think they just uh, Activision needs a puppet over there, and I think Mike's that guy. And I, whether whether we like it or not, who else is going to deliver whatever news corporate wants to give your wholly owned subsidiary of Activision Blizzard? Like, yeah, he's the guy. Know. It's you know, it's not good news coming out of it. Where you know, you. you I don't know, man. I, I really liked the the era of hey, we're we're all craftsmen here. It's a workshop. Uh, you know, everyone works hard to deliver a product they're passionate about. That was clearly the proof was in the pudding because the games reflected that ethos. And um, boy, these other guys—they're not about that at all. It sounds yeah. like no. We empathy. could have that mentality with like a hundred percent less sexual harassment. We'd really be on to something. Yeah, we'd be moving right up that that. that train. Oh, we'd be in a we'd be in a real good place. Yeah, that but just a bit of empathy and humanity and delivering it right. You get to a certain point where the captains of the ship just want to drive. They just where's the profits, man? Yeah. Okay. Well, here's some bad ideas, that, but that about how to generate <laughs> profits, and then we get mobile games. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. The only good news to come oh. out of Blizzard this week is they finally are launching as of today Diablo. Three season twenty eight, which uh, uses that altar of rights thing they've added. It's basically a uh, somewhat of the systems that are coming into four, and it kind of yeah. changes the game. It's pretty I'm fundamental. Play. I'm gonna I play can't... tonight. I think. Yeah, I want to check it play. out. See yeah, what's up. Gonna, I, it, you know, Diablo four is around the corner. My, it's twenty eighth season. They said they put a little extra special sauce in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I might. I'm gonna log in tonight and. Check it out. Yeah. yeah, it might be worth looking at. Yeah, I want to see what I that's do about. You like going back to Diablo three randomly? Diablo is good. Uh, also, uh, Chronos or Chrono Cross Remaster is getting a patch, and uh, it's out now. And John's thrilled, right? You're stoked. I am. This has been. I, I put this on here selfishly because I was very excited for this game. I've talked about Chrono Cross a lot on this show. Um, and then was very disappointed to say that, unfortunately, the remaster had uh, basically, I felt, unplayable uh, frame rate issues mm-hmm. and uh, bemoaned that they seem to have put it out and just forgotten about it like yeah. they do with a lot of ports. They definitely feels like they did that because it's been like almost a year since that game came out. But they have finally put out a patch to address the frame rate issues, a couple other things. Um, so it hasn't been completely forgotten. I've yet to play it. I installed it tonight. So, um, I am curious to see if it fixes it. Supposedly it actually goes up to 60 frames per second on the PC, which is actually faster than what the game originally did. Um, and may cause some issues, but Hey, better issues because it's running butter smooth than, uh, it's unplayable because it can't even get near what it's supposed to do so right um i'll check it out and report back so awesome can't wait to hear about that also sony had a state of play uh their february 2023 state of play nothing crazy uh revealed here some third party stuff they shared an extended look at suicide squad kill the justice league it was also revealed that that game requires an online connection even during single player people are not happy about it um, I got bad news yeah, for you. That kinda, game... It kind of ties into, I think it was a few months ago, um, there were leaks. Uh, it, I don't know if we even talked about it on the show or not, because uh, I felt like it was, of course, there were, but um, that there, it seems like there's going to be a heavy store component. Oh, to yeah. It. Yeah. The um, battle that pass was, and all that. Yeah. yeah somebody le- leaked a picture of like Captain Boomerang with like a, 
season pass bit of business. I don't know if it was a season pass, but something above his head. And it's like, oh, looks like they're going for a games of service deal. Yeah. So, Which is fine we'll, with me. I just, we'll see. I'm fine with that. I just don't understand why that stuff has to be tied to single player online connectivity. I just don't get it. Yeah, it's weird. Well, it's because they need to update the great deals. How will you know about the great deals if it's not online to show you what the great deals are, Scott? Well, uh, like all other things, I'll go and look when I'm ready to look at them. <laughs> You bastards. No, but we got to bring the deals to you. I hate when they bring the deals to me. Um, <laughs> let's let's move to this one. Uh, Cap, Capcom revealed three Good new Street boy. Fighter 6 characters, so that's cool. Uh, Zangief, Lily, and Cammy. Yeah, speaking of Cammy, it's a real Cammy-themed episode today. That game, I'm interested in 6 after seeing some of that play last there was it last month and a bunch of people got codes or got uh early access streamers anyway it looked cool it looked like there's some sh some meat on that bone so i kind of yeah. want to see that uh baldur's it's gonna gate be a good year for fighting games it got cut but uh, mortal kombat 12 got confirmed oh yeah that also got confirmed so but it's gonna be uh not really announced we haven't seen or heard anything but there was a phone call on it where an executive said we're very excited about how Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to perform. And also, there's a very hotly anticipated Mortal Kombat 12 coming out this year. So we've got a lot to be excited about. And gamers went, oh, there's a Mortal Kombat 12. Fantastic. You know what they should do? They should do a Mortal Kombat 12. One of the, uh, one of the finishing moves should be one of the players is like the winner. Let's say it's Scorpion. Runs over to the loser. Let's say it's Striker. Okay. Okay. Takes a yeah. takes a phone, puts it to his head, makes Stryker listen to that guy you just described, and tell Stryker so bored he explodes or something. That's what they should do. Yeah, that sounds like a, that's a good fatality. I'm sure they'd go for it. That's a falls asleep, cracks his head on a rock, and they just that uh, coroner comes in and goes, "He's dead." Yep, fatality. <laughs> that's what I want. I actually because there that was a big news story about Mortal Kombat was people kind of. It's not funny, but people having a hard time because they had to do so much research for gore and graphic violence and all of that that it actually impacted the team. Mm. I I kind of want to see some extremely passive, nice fatalities where it's just somebody falls, uh, just falls off screen, and then someone comes in and goes, he died. Mm. <laughs> and then it just says fatality. <laughs> that's great. I mean, there are the friendships. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Babalities, yeah, animalities, nice. all that. Babalities. You see some babies. Do you ever see uh have you I'm ever just... seen Smoke's new one in eleven where he splits you from crotch to head in half? Mm -hmm. It's pretty rough. <laughs> yep. It's there's some rough. rough ones. Yeah. There's some stuff I mean, in there. Uh, was it katana or no? Could be katana. Katana yeah, wins. Was, I mean, her. Yeah, yeah. She slices people up with her fans a lot. Oh, yeah. And she's got, if you pull her little mask down, she's got like Baraka teeth, right? Oh, that's Melina. Oh, that's Melina. That's Melina. I get yeah, those two mixed up all the time. Well, they're clones of each other. You should. Oh. That's that's acceptable. All right. But I, that's, I what think... I'm, that's what I'm looking forward to. If anyone has leaned into the complete unhinged single player campaign, it is Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I live for. Whatever it is, whatever random shit they're doing, it's everyone's so like, I have an idea. They're like, don't even say it. We'll put it in. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll include it. It's the perfect kind of stupid. I love it. I don't. I, I assume what's his uh, his name just left me, but our friend who listens to the show, who Tyler Lansdale. Tyler, yeah. Tyler, if you're listening, I'm not saying you should leak anything on core. I'm just saying you could. I'm not saying you should. Yeah, if you wanna, if you don't announce don't say leak because that's going to get Tyler in trouble. Oh, yeah, I don't want you to know. If you want to announce no. anything. Let me make, you know what? I Let mean, me make it different? clear. Half the leaks are probably secret announcements. Anyway. They probably are, but I'll just say this. Yes, they're stealth announcements. That's a lot, often true. But I'll say this. Yeah. Tyler, what I actually mean is to say to anyone who is working with or around or above Tyler, he has never given us anything. He's always been and just the not. nicest guy, but never given a single drop of corporate espionage everything's fine with tyler all right just the to clear closest the closest i ever got to talking about mortal Kombat with tyler is he and i were talking about heroes of the storm and somebody jumped into our conversation to be like yo when you gonna buff striker <laughs> <laughs> that's the closest it ever got that's amazing dude striker's in permanent need of buff <laughs> the character sucks all right moving on uh baldur's gate 3 us. coming out on august 31st on playstation 5 yeah uh xbox version not currently being talked about so no one knows 
Uh, so that's a PC and PS5 exclusive for now. Let's see. New Resident Evil 4 trailer confirms the return of Mercenaries mode. Also, that looked real good. Like graphically. Yeah. I don't know if I'm playing it because 4 and I have a wobbly Someone relationship. Someone will buy it for you, Scott. And I have a feeling we'll go through that together. We literally today had somebody saying that you and I playing Resident Evil together is like ASMR to them. I so heard them, yeah. Me screaming and then you and want going, him to play. Like, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like, no, he said something like Scott screaming like a girl and then John going, yep, yep, or whatever. That's his <laughs> yeah. ASMR, which is pretty and great. Scott's going, John, 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 <laughs> you didn't tell me about this, John. Yeah. Anyway. What's up? They also talked about some PSVR 2 stuff and Tetris Effect uh, talking, or there's a whole thing about Tetris Effect being cool. Anyway, a few third-party things, some small uh, stuff, nothing big, but a Sony state of play nonetheless. All right. Maybe so, they had an a, a lackadaisical state of play so that they could take that to the trade commission and be like, "Look, this is what we have if we don't." Look have how Call sad we are without Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, we may, we have no games. There's yeah. nothing. It's it's mercenaries mode and Resident Evil Four. That's all we have. Yeah, it's all we have. It's all we need. Uh, Civ Seven is happening. It's official now. Civilization Seven is being worked on over at Fraxis, so expect that in They've probably a year. DLC'd every civilization, and they're ready to start over. Yep. I do Starting hope, over. I would like to see them add some of the, like, narrative stuff that you're seeing other games, like Old World. Wait, is it Old World? Old yes. World, yeah. Old with, World. With the story. Old, the... <laughs> Old World and the other one. What's the other one? <laughs> King, something of Kings. Uh, Old, King's, Qu Old King's Ultimate, Crusader Ultimate King. Kings? Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings 3? Three? 3. That's it. Yeah. Okay. King. Old World and Crusader <laughs> Kings 3. I'd like to see them implement some of those uh more narrative features cuz I think those are really cool. Uh but Civ is the is the game I don't have to learn from scratch when I play, mm -hmm. so I'd like to have those elements merged into my Civ. That's yes. what would be on my wish list. I, I do Civ. feel like they have to maybe stretch a little this time cuz it can't just be you know 5 and 6 were a lot alike. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So seven needs to be some big leap. I don't know what. I don't know how they do it. I'm sure it'll be great no matter what they do. Super hexagons. Uh, Konami is going to do a new Castlevania announcement as well as a Metal Gear Solid Three remake announcement at E3, and we don't have do to go into remake... it. Oh, go ahead. Do they remake one and two? Uh, no. But I think three is re <laughs> three is like revered. Right. <laughs> three is right? really good one. Well, that's they, not true. You know really what? They did, to remake. they did remake one, um, but it was a PS2 remake. Remastered yeah. or remade? Remade. Like, they redid all the cutscenes. They cut did a remake and... of Metal Gear Solid. It was called Twin Snakes. Right. That is correct. Oh, it couldn't be called Metal Gear Solid Remake. Okay. Right, that's right, right. Probably. It was a long time ago, so... Really? Um, most people PS2. don't love it because it's too uh, action movie e. But I thought it was very cool at the time. It was I for uh, GameCube. Yeah. Um, there's also well, a rumor I... that all the Metal Gear Solid games are coming to the PC. That's been a rumor oh. for I feel like the past couple weeks that they're going to release all the old MGS titles on PC. I so could go for that. I would be pretty excited about that. Those games are really good. They're really good. Three is especially and good. Frighteningly ahead of their time at times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, story wise, like I thought they were crazy then, but mm, not so much now. But now you play it and you're like, oh God, like, oh, how shit. did they know? Yeah. How did they know this was going to happen? <laughs> He's a genius, it turns out. Uh, Konami's doing that. And we'll, well, I think we'll have a separate discussion on a future show about what we want out of a Castlevania moving forward because that's a big question for me. Like, what, what does that even look like? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, in VR, I can whip things. Yeah, you can whip shit in VR. That's it. That's the entire and, deal. And hang off of chandeliers and swing. Yeah. While awesome uh, while idea. Sia's chandelier plays in the background. All right. We are now diving into emails. That's right. That's a good question. You heard question. me. Uh, it is a good question. We're going to not do an email, though, because <laughs> I just lied about that. <laughs> Let's dive into emails. Instead, here's, here's none emails. Instead, I'm going to play two phone calls that we got in rapid Ooh. succession. Okay. That's oh, actually three. One of these got... Oh, no, no. I, the way I did it is weird. Okay, so it's two different people, but three calls. You'll understand when I get there. The okay. first one is about housing, and it's directed at Bo, I believe. So enjoy. Hey, Core folks. Andy here. Love the show. John and Scott have both been talking about in-game housing in ESO and Final Fantasy XIV lately, but Bo has been dismissive of the idea of in-game housing as something silly. I just want to push back on that a little bit in defense of John and Scott. 
Bo, you played hours and hours of V Rising about a year ago. And in the process, you created this amazing castle for your vampire. It had all the stuff. Looked like something that Dracula would grace with his presence. So I'm wondering how, on the one hand, you can dive into that gate and build up such a cool place. But on the other hand, you can label what John and Scott do in their games for player housing is silly. And I know a lot of what goes in the V Rising Castle is for utility to be able to play the game. But come on, did you really need all those elegant candelabras, gothic mirror, and distinguished wing back there? Chills. Cheers, Stella. <laughs> That's a pretty good point. Uh, you're getting called out. Yeah. Got you. That's a decent point. You were very decorative Hi in your, your hypocrite rising over here. <laughs> Can't wait for that sequel. So what do you yeah. what do you rebut for that? Or do you have a rebuttal? Or do you agree? Mm, no, I mean I spent a lot of time making housing in Valheim too. Mm-hmm. I think I just don't like the... Um... He just doesn't like it when other people talk about it. <laughs> no, what I don't like about... It, I don't like like MMO or online housing in that way. Okay. If that makes any sense. No, I get it. I don't know. I, I Mainly I was just kind of bored because it's just decorating. Mm. It is The mechanics do matter. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. But you're, you're, you're not right. wrong about that. There is some of that... ESO has some mechanics I think in it's... it, though. In the, I think in the it's housing. more of this. I mean, someone can go back and correct me if I'm wrong. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I'm not into like houses, I guess. It's just maybe just some bias there. Let's, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when someone's like talking about something and you're not that into it, like, yeah. you know, was, yeah. you know you're, you're with every, some people and they're like. the VR section comes up <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> you're, they're like talking about country music and you just kind of let them have their thing. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's a fair point. I don't have, you know, yes, I did build houses in Valheim and in V Rising, and it's awesome. Do um, you think if you got into an MMO, let's just say one grabbed you miraculously? I know you're you're not really in a time and place for it right now, but you got super into one, and it had an awesome housing system. Do you think you would be? Do you think you would engage with it, or do you think that would just be a part of the game you would ignore? I, I can see value in it. I think maybe I'm just less polite than John is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just I, I have less self control. <laughs> John's like, all right, it's VR time. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, let me be yeah. a polite, respectful individual. And I'm like, John, yeah. ah! <laughs> this is like. Make well, it stop. If I was your defense yeah. lawyer, I would say the big difference here is Bo playing v rising to that level is a very it is a bit of a fantasy live out kind of experience in that game uh, i think he's got a point i just i think you know the defense rests yeah <laughs> it's fine all right guilty all guilty. Right. guilty is charged. We, we'll, we'll put a guilty uh, plea in yes he's right if you saw me on my stream i played that game like 80 hours that week and yes i was like making it the sweetest castle on the server a hundred percent yeah and it well was, played. It was Thank cool. Going in and humiliating. I never felt like uh, I could live up to it. Making me eat some humble pie and humiliating. I, I never me. could live up to your your standard there in that game. You were you had the best castle on that planet. Or of that. It's not I really planet. like that game. Planet. I'm looking for <laughs> Planet Vampire. Vampire. Planet. <laughs> uh, they're, they made some big announcements. They're still like pretty early on, it seems like, the way they view the game. So yeah. I'm hoping they got a real good like they got a good game idea there. I'm will. I'm looking forward to going back. Yeah, Scott, can, please, can, real quick, can you trademark Planet Vampire? I need yeah. to do something with it. I don't know what. Just trademark it. Planet Vampire. If we can Vampire. get it, we need it. I need it for something. I don't know what, but uh, my domain John's buying days are Survivor's back. clone now. Yeah. I need one Planet more weird dom I need one more weird domain I'll never touch. And so that's the one. Let's do it. Um, all right. Now, these two calls are important because it's one after the other. This is the person's... Uh, Stopping the podcast to say something and then continuing on and finding out what we actually did. So enjoy. Hey, poor crew. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I was kind of on John's side at first uh, about announcing the winner at the end of the show instead of just leaving it for the live listeners. But uh, after about three and a half minutes of you guys deciding whether or not you're going to do that, and then another two minutes uh, after that, before you actually announce it, I'm kind of back with Scott. So uh, just get the grain all reading the game. Uh, love you guys. <laughs> Bye. All right. So that's part one. The Interesting sequ thing to finally decide to call in about. It. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we well, this talking one... about a lot of things. He's like, yeah, this contest issue needs my opinion. I, I may have, I may have had this for a little longer than that. But anyway, the second, his follow up is obviously him. 
hitting resume on his podcast and hearing how things turned out. Hey, uh, Color Chris, me again. Uh, didn't leave a name last time. Uh, just actually finished listening to the episode with the flip flop. Uh, back on John's side now. The the giving her the wrong code is, is pretty funny. So sorry. I uh, just wanted to apologize. Uh, guess this is what swimming in, or pooping in a lake feels like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I, I applaud this caller. Yeah. Hey, we're doing healing here. I admitted I was wrong. Didn't yep. try to come up with some lame ass defense for that first yeah. caller. And here we have a wonderful listener. Who's like, you know what? I was wrong. It was an opportunity for you to make a mistake for my enjoyment, and mm -hmm. uh, I should learn not to. <laughs> I should learn that everything that we do is potentially something we can mess up. Yeah, and, it's all content uh, in the end. Is the way I look at it. Uh, no, that was fantastic. I loved every second of that. So.